Um, 200 or, okay. Hello, everybody. So we are being recorded right now, and I want to apologize. It's my fault we were late. I was slow to get here, so excuse me all, but we are jumping right into it. My name is Justine Kucha. I'm chair of the Battery Park City Committee. Um, this is our um, November meeting, and um, welcome. So we have an agenda, and we are starting with uh, let me look to see if I'm yes, thank you. We are starting with the uh, Battery Park City Greenway Playscape, which is also called Pataki Parkway. We're going to have an update and discussion, and um, I don't know if we've got Craig on the line, Nick, or not. It's yes, okay. good evening. No, Craig is on the line. He said he's in, but he can't hear anything. So how about now? Can he hear? Because we're we're not. So now we're yeah, yeah, we'll we'll start. Start. If, Do we connect the audio there? Oh, no, it should be here. Can Craig see us? I didn't ask him. Uh, it doesn't. Well, okay, start he said he video. can hear. Okay, good. Okay. What do we and want to start see, video? Start video is I think red. we might have to start video. Yeah. Yeah. When we're ready to start the video. Okay. Sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, Craig said he can both see and yeah. hear us. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you, Craig. Confirmed. So, okay. so yes. can we yeah. see and hear? Well, when it when he's a not he may be a attendee. So now let's look at the people. Let's look at the attendees. And uh, attendees, is this you all? We're getting there. Right. Oh, he said he entered as a presenter. That's helpful. He didn't. Oh, he didn't. <laughs> make him a yeah, as long as we can allow him to be able to speak as well. Make a panelist. You can make better panelists too. She's on. She's on the um, committee. Maybe chat with us. Don't be afraid to get on the mic. Right. And we'll get started with our first meeting uh, agenda item, please. Okay. Uh, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you. It's good to be back in person. A little jarring, but <laughs> it's Cheers. good to be in such close contact with everyone again. We've been remote for most of the past number of years. I just think a couple of months in between where we kind of started up again and not. Mm -hmm. um, but great to be back. Just to tee it off for you tonight, I'm here with uh, Dan Dixon in person, who's our the director of planning and design, director of planning and design in the real property department. And Craig Hudon, who many of you know from over the years, who's our vice president of our parks program and all the wonderful programming and events we do across our 36 acres of parks every year. Um, Craig uh, and his team do a wonderful job in planning that. So what we had done uh, previously, and it's over the course of, I think, over a year now, is we had kicked around the idea with the community board of trying to activate uh, some of the space, and Zach, if you can bring up uh, the presentation, if you don't mind. Um, what is colloquially known as the Pataki walkway, but it's the space uh, right adjacent to Royal West Street in the southern part of Battery Park City between uh, first street and second, first place and second first place. place, and second place. Um, as uh, initially to try and offset some of the loss from the construction on low and for resiliency, but moreover, as a place to see if there was a way to be interested in the community to um, have that space activated for different purposes. So that's just going to come right up. And show the document outline, maybe. Sorry. No, it's okay. So what you're seeing now is we're trying to make it bigger. You can go to the top. There you go. Just keep doing it that way. Oops. But do you want to just look at the thumbnails? Make it full screen if you can. That oh yeah, full screen will do. There we go. Close that. And there's a way to get the thumbnails out. Isn't this one? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, we're learning as we go. No, so it's okay. So yeah. just to give you all an idea, we were to you a couple of times. Um, and we just wanted to come back now and update uh, the committee. When last we left it, we discussed it in July, Dan joined us as I did online. And what we said was we had gotten some feedback from the committee. Um, Betty had some ideas about uh, the turf installation. Uh, Jeff had some ideas generally about what people liked, what they didn't like. We agreed at the time that it was perhaps worth giving it a go, but let's keep a close eye and see what the uptake was, especially as school started. Mm -hmm. And as we were able to run one of our fall programs called Games and Rooms, which Craig and his team put together to run Fridays during the fall uh, from noon to one as an idea to see what type of 
uh, uptake we would have, if any, on this space. So, um, Zach, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide, just to reorient everyone as a rough idea. That's the area, one up. That's the that's the area we're talking about. So we took first and second place. Uh, that's the current location of uh, what we're calling the Greenway Playscape, which is in essence a turf covering um, and some uh, matted down mats that has this QR code on it that people can scan to get feedback about what they like. So that's just and, and just to here. remind everyone, I think this was envisioned kind of as a Playscape, uh, a pilot project that could be expanded as necessary mm -hmm. and originally had a much larger scope, um, including some built in furniture and some other uh, areas for activity. We decided to kind of have a soft opening, which, which was this vinyl and turf uh, rollout. And we have done some programming, but what we'd ask today is to figure out if we should put the kibosh on that, or if we should continue rolling it out and, and make it a little bit more robust. Joining that, thank you, Dan. Mm -hmm. Joining that as well, in advance of this rolling out, we had also put, speaking of light touch, some tables and chairs simply out there as well, just Kind of a very passive people were walking by and wanting to sit and have a cup of coffee or something that they can do but as well but again something that was able to be certainly folded up and removed um if that's what folks liked there to be used but also easy, easily able to be taken up so zach you can go to the next slide please so what we found is you can move that over just a tiny bit to the right that's okay i mean the numbers are really oh, you make, just make it smaller yeah um, I will let Craig take it from here, because what follows here essentially are some pictures. But I had mentioned games and groups on Fridays at noon as part of our fall programming. There were a series of dates, and I will um, admit that when I first went through this, I got the numbers from Craig, and thank you for that. I was very happy to see that the first date we had, 40 <laughs> participants in it, that was on September 15th. Thereafter, you'll see we had some rainouts, et cetera. But overall, we had a uh, kind of a modest uptake on the space. At the bottom, when we get that fixed, you'll see the the totals. Um, yeah, the pictures are. That can go back up. Yeah, you want to see this picture? I'm trying. Yeah, no, it's okay. Even without the picture, if you could just scroll down, down to the bottom down with the totals. So four program dates. Keep going. No, no, no. Oh. The bottom. I have to zoom out. Yeah, I have to zoom out. Okay. Yeah. 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 If you can zoom out on that screen. Yeah. On. Because there's four program there dates, I told you Ah, yeah. yeah. How'd you go down? Yeah. Yeah. Got so it. four program dates, seven yeah. total participants, and roughly 18 participants per program date. So with that, I will turn it over to Craig to give uh, some of his, uh, perhaps some additional insights and ideas about the space, what he observed, and then turn it over to you all to see what uh, what some of your thoughts are. So Craig, sorry to make that so uh, long, but please take it away. No, thank you, Nick. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Yes, yes. Great. Um, thank you, committee members, for allowing me to talk about our initial sort of formally programmed um, program uh, on in this area. Um, we we publicized this for the fall calendar, uh, which um, takes uh, which starts in September. So we programmed six dates, two of which got rained out, as you can see. I will say that the weather this wasn't very overall cooperative in the fall in general. Um, but we did uh, start off with a bang. We, we wanted to do something um, that uh, would have some presence in that space. So we what you can't see in these pictures, we also had a DJ out there. So we were making plenty of noise. People knew that we were out there. Um, we had signs up telling everyone that it was uh, free to anyone uh, who wanted to participate. Um, most of the participants were uh, people passing through the thoroughfare. Um, at the beginning of the program, we would have some of the, um, the school kids who were on their lunch break uh, would, would take part um, and followed by uh, uh, mainly people that were passing through the space that would, that would take part. Um, I think, uh, as you can see from the program numbers, um, it, we had, I'd say a moderate level of, of interaction. Um, I would have liked to have seen more. We didn't really seem to gain traction uh, during the, the six week run. Um, 
but you know, it was utilized. It was appreciated by the people who took part, and uh, I would say, you know, sort of a mixed success. Okay. Maybe we can run through some of the slides and have some other pictures. Yeah, uh, Craig. Unless you had anything else on this slide, the balance of the presentation is just some pictures that give folks an idea of uh, the sense of people using it, which I was actually kind of encouraged to see. So there's a picture of some folks playing uh, ping pong. Uh, I think that's bocce ball, right? <laughs> In the back, like this bocce ball. Yeah. Like. That's correct. Um, we, we wanted to do things that were for all ages. So and I think Marianne's in the background there. Yes, yeah, Marianne. I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, uh, so, you know, we didn't want to be age specific at this program. We wanted it to be open to everyone. Um, uh, so there were no restrictions as to who could take part. Uh, we did, you know, engage with sort of all ages. Um, I would have liked to have seen more, but, um, you know, this is what we came up with in the four weeks that we were able to be out there that we, with the two that got rained out. There's a couple more slides just with pictures, not to, you know, belabor it, but that's, um, uh, and then I think there's one more, Zach, perhaps. And just some, uh, looks like some young school students playing ping pong as well. The you know, last thing I would add before we get to the final slide is anecdotally, we tried to get uh, the contact of the group. I'm still trying to chase them down. But anecdotally, we also know that there is apparently a volleyball team that works through Manhattan U, comprised of students, I believe, from PSIS 276, that sporadically, but definitely nowhere out there, use the turf, I think, once a week for practice. I'm not sure how intense the practice gets because it's not necessarily fenced off. But anecdotally, we know it's been getting some use. But as Craig said rightly, I think it's, it's certainly modest. Yeah. Um, and I give Craig a lot of credit because over the course of my time here, I know him and, him and his team have worked very hard to kind of activate spaces that in the past weren't really um, used heavily that have now become community favorites, like the Winter Plaza, for instance, or mm -hmm. the Irish Hunger Memorial Plaza. There's programs that are done underneath there under the, the Camp Believer area of the <laughs> memorial where it hangs down. This, I think, and Craig can speak more to it, kind of fundamentally a different type of space. It's not really a destination so much as it's kind of people are passing by and through. Um, so I don't know how much higher the ceiling can be, but certainly something that we got, again, some modest uptake on. Uh, and unless Craig or Dan had anything else to add, certainly happy to hear, hear your thoughts. Yeah, it's a challenging site. You know, it's not, it's not a... Uh, a static public space. As Nick mentioned, a lot of people are walking through typically from either the battery to Wobbly Center, etc. Um, I will also add that sometimes uh, a public space like this gains momentum. So while early returns might be modest, perhaps in the spring or summer, if we uh, continue this program, it might add a little bit more momentum. Um, but yeah, open, open to uh, any thoughts that anyone had? Thank you so much. First of all, thank you for coming and coming in person. I really appreciate it. I do like the fact of us being being together and Craig's hello on the phone. Um, I'm going to ask the, the committee what they think and what, it, what so I mean, basically the question that we're being asked is, um, I'm, I'm hearing you, tell me what I'm missing. No, absolutely. Kill the whole thing and keep it as it is or expand it in stages as we go. Correct. Yeah, or if you if you've experienced it directly, what you thought. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, any thoughts to anybody? Oh, one more thing I will add. I'm sorry, just because I, I want to make sure I touch on it. Betty and I have had, had some conversations about this as well, and there's a survey that is actually available on our site. But also, if you scan the QR code on the actual ground covering, we haven't had a ton of pickup on the survey, but we did add, add a couple of questions. I know because we wanted to get to the question of we don't want to presuppose that people necessarily were seeing it. And we're going to support the space we wanted to get an idea of you know do you like the space as is or what would you do differently with the space as it exists so that survey is still alive um and you can continue to provide feedback even after this evening we'll continue to push that out and folks should tell us uh what they think even as the weather starts to get a little cold if people are passing by they just want to send their thoughts tonight or thereafter we'll continue to take that feedback but certainly it's good to hear everything anybody so, so, so uh, just have a yeah. clarifying question so speaking of the weather getting cold, um, what's the intention in terms of programming through the winter? I mean, is, is, are you contemplating that it would stop soon and then resume in the spring? Or what, what is your contemplation in terms of cold months? Yeah, I'd like to talk about programming and that it usually generally goes indoors. 
Yeah. Uh, so at this time of year, we're transitioning. The end of October, we transition to our indoor um, programming space. Uh, the weather just gets too iffy to you know formally program um, our green spaces. So we do not have anything additionally planned for the fall or winter right now in this space. Um, uh, and you know, certainly are open to picking it up again as the weather you know gets nicer in the spring. Um, and but also you know want to think about uh, does it make sense to do just more passive type of activity here as opposed as opposed to something that's formally programmed, um, such as you know things like just bringing out ping pong tables and letting the public you know utilize them at certain hours of the day and certain days of the week and that kind of thing. Um, those are other considerations that you know we're, we're thinking about as we go forward. And, and, and related to that question, in terms of the uh, astroturf and the vinyl surface, or whatever the material is, are you contemplating to keep that down through the winter, or take it up and put it back down when the weather gets warmer? Yeah, we're we're currently working with the vendor to figure out our options there. Um, it could be that we could remove snow and ice with it down. But we're also considering uh, storage as an option. Okay. So, so to some extent, it sounds like we potentially have time mm -hmm. to see because not a great deal would be happening in the immediate future, even if you were going forward from a programmatic perspective. Yeah. Certainly from a programmatic for their own. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So, Sarah, um, <clears throat> were there any um, complaints about the DJ in the sun? You know, I didn't. I didn't get any. I no, we did not. Uh, we did not get any concerns at that time of day. It, it, it's a pretty. No, it's a pretty noisy spot in general. So. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was you know, just which is, there. And it was a Friday. If that makes a difference. Yeah, Friday. At yeah, no, it, it does actually make a difference during right. the day and on a, you know weekday. It, I think that makes sense, and I do imagine that people are not shy about complaining if they've got an issue with it, um, and. I don't see anybody raising their hand in the attendee section. Eric, go ahead. Because I know, I know, I want to hear from Eric and Betty, especially yeah. to see what they think. Uh, I mean, I've been against this since the beginning. Um, I don't think that needs to be said again. I think it's an eyesore on a very beautiful space. Um, and every single time I go by it, I went by it twice last night. There's dogs peeing out of it every single time. I don't think it's worth to keep up for 18 people on a Friday from noon to one. I put that out there. But say that, say that last seven. sentence again. I, yeah, I, I don't mean. think it's worth keeping up for 18 people for one hour on a Friday afternoon. That being said, I don't think fall was the right place to start because the weather's been cramping for bad. <laughs> very, right. very, yeah. very, very bad weather. I'm willing to at least give it till uh, the next year and see how spring into summer comes. I know tourists will probably predominant people walking through that way. I don't know many Battery Park residents that are stopping through. So, unless they're walking their dog. Unless they're walking their dog. <laughs> yeah, right. That's yeah, exactly. a very convenient place, but I don't know them stopping to, for this specifically. Um, so if you're looking at that, to get that type of people, I think I'm willing to give it till spring, summer, see if the people increase more than 18 people on average. I'd also be curious to see what the usage from 276 is yeah. mm -hmm. or Metropolitan College, which is across the street. Um, see if there's any kind of connectivity that you might have with that. Well, I've talked to TLE at least. I don't know what 276, but TLE is not very happy with it just because there's no enclosures, but they deal with smaller kids. So right. That's why I was thinking there, 276. Right? 276. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think anecdotally, the kids have used it for uh, lunches. For out lunch, I'm sure. Yeah. Right. And Ted, I don't know if you entered at the time, but we have gotten, again, anecdotally, but uh, Muriel, who works on with Craig on the programming mm -hmm. team, said that she had run into, albeit sporadically, a group from Manhattan Youth of students from PSI's 276 in the volleyball team whose season ends in November that used this turf once a week for practice. I don't think it's that's after school. On. That's yeah. after school. That's after school. Yeah. After school. Yeah. 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 Still, it's a good during use school. during the. I mean, just to understand what yeah, opportunities. Yeah, they use it on the afternoons, like three o'clock, four o'clock. Yeah. That's not right. Good. But the question is to make it a viable and valuable resource. How can it be used more consistently during the day? Much mm -hmm. like Eric's saying. People, people like it. They don't. They don't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
I mean, sorry, I, I have a follow-up question. Yeah, go is ahead. It only open Friday, twelve to one. Is that the only time that the games are there? I think that was the only time. Oh. Craig, correct me if I'm wrong. That was the only time that it was specifically programmed. But I think there were some passive activities that you could do throughout the day. Is there? Where's the programming? Is it just on that QR code? No, no, no. I'm sorry. If you go through some, so that that's a picture actually of some of the stuff that's put out for the program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do people know about it? Who's telling people in the neighborhood about this? Oh, so it's in our social media. It's in our event calendar. Mm -hmm. right. It but, is in our newsletter. But if it, it's uh, an average or it's, battery park citizen doesn't, if they don't follow follow those, yeah. there's no like advertising. Mm -hmm. Not, yeah. uh, I don't know if we did any specific programmatic. I think the only thing there is you. It says I think on this side you can scan yeah. barcode and see so can scan yeah. barcode. You would think that it would be good for um, for the seniors, you know, as part of the senior center or something like that. So they could do outdoor bridge or ping pong or cornhole or. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean I. And Betty, anything? Or I don't mean putting yeah, on the spot buddy. or not. But if you have, again, I have been completely against it. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely varied. Like the second, totally transportation. For me, it's a place to get up and down. I know I've changed the way I have to move around because this is so inconvenient. Uh, I can't get over the turf, and I notice nobody else does. But look at the pictures. A lot more pedestrians in all the pictures than there are people using participants in the activity because they have to narrow down to get around. As I said, the turf takes up more than half of the walkway. So when you can't do anything with it, the joggers, when I watched it multiple times, the walkers all avoid it. Mm -hmm. Even the able-bodied ones, the seniors and those with walkers and things certainly avoid it. So everybody has to move out of the way. Any activities with balls, completely against them because I really don't need to be dodging King Kongs or anything else or volleyballs or anything else. They have no place on a pedestrian space. So again, it's safer for me to use the bike work, which I know they don't like and I don't think they like doing. But be real honest about what you're doing. You're creating a recreation space at the expense of pedestrians and you're driving them into the bike lane, which is then harming them. So if you're an online skater, the turf doesn't do you any good. If you're a jogger, it doesn't do you any good. If you're a wheelchair user or a walker user, it doesn't do you any good. But uh, it's in the way, and it takes up a lot of space. So when I've gone by there, all I can smell, all I can smell is dog here. I mean, it's, it's very obvious that the dogs yeah. use it all the time. So it's not very sanitary. It's why anyone uses it, I don't understand. The volleyball, why they don't use a hard surface, I also don't understand. Uh, if you go use the volleyball court. Yeah. yeah. We are sensitive to all of these issues. I, I think they're I think they're spot on. Um, I, I think Nick made reference to the fact that the the origin of this project was to try to give some outdoor recreational space mm -hmm. because we lost Wagner Park for right. a significant amount of time. And so the last thing we want to do is be a nuisance. Um, I think it's, I think all these comments are really useful in helping us understand the path forward. And if the best thing is to get rid of it, that's okay. If we can uh, troubleshoot some ideas for how to improve it, um, open to that as well. Okay. I lost the uh, Esplanade. I lost the sidewalk. Yes. I lost a lot yeah. of things. You yep. can talk about the park all you want. The fact is pedestrians lost almost everything. Yeah. And now they're taking away this little bit that's left for them. So I'm left with the street. Yeah. The street is all I have for getting around. And that's not fair. So I usually go over into Five Eye instead. And I don't use that as much. That's a good point. Thank you. Um, was there ever any conversation of moving this South Battery Place into, into the park? That was obviously before the construction started up. It, it, it'd be useless to move anything there now. But instead of keeping the programming, just moving it out of the pedestrian walkway, maybe onto some grass area from the park. I wasn't here during the origins of the project, but I think that would cause some issues because we don't we don't maintain that area. You're talking about battery historic battery south yeah. south of battery right. Place. So that's about the Pure Plaza. There's nothing there, but it's all boarded up. Oh, it's all boarded. So yes. It's going to be boarded up I mean. for years. The, the, I mean, basically, this was done because Wagner Park was, was undertaken away. 
I yeah, assume yeah. that unless this was a big hit or there's one program from this that's this huge hit, and perhaps there's pieces of it that you'll take and then we'll put it in to the Wagner Park as programming. But the concept of this being then retained, I don't think so. Not like this yeah. once the park is open. I don't I know think it was some, ever planned. I know some yeah. of the families that really miss the Wagner Park and the music and the activities of taking their kids and having that area. Most of the families that I, I know there have just gone up to Roosevelt. I mean, Rockabella. Oh, Rockabella. 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 Yeah, sorry. Yeah, right. Yes. Moved the venue yeah, so, yeah, for, for, yeah. For the benefit of the committee, if it's helpful, we were very glad, again, due to Craig's great work and the work of the resiliency generally, is that all the programs that people have come to know and love, we didn't lose any. Yeah, we so lose. River Blues simply yeah. moved yeah. to Rockefeller Park, which some people found even a superior yeah. venue. Battery yeah. Dance Festival, they right. were very, very happy with the space. So we didn't lose any program. This was something that was a new, this, this was an add on, not. Something that was yeah. from or two. Um, maybe the, um, maybe an approach to the, well, you know what? I want to wrap it up because we've got other stuff Dada to talk about. Dada has her hand. Dada, you can speak, okay. and then I'm going to wrap it up. And then Dada, Marianne, and then I'm going to wrap it up. Go ahead, Dada. Let's unmute yourself. Can't hear you, Dada. Be able to, she should be. She's a, she's a panel. She's a panelist now. I put her up because she's on the board. Yeah, no. She public members are only panelists when they are oh, at their present. own committee. Oh, I did not know that. Okay. Public members are attendees at every other, other committee. I did not realize. But okay. as being oh. panelists right now, you can unmute her. She can yeah, unmute herself. Yeah, just speak at that. Go ahead. And then you need she's to put her back. She's not paying attention. She's not paying attention. Okay, so put her back at the attendee, speak. please. I'll and go ahead, yeah. Marianne. So maybe the thing to do is in some way to communicate. This is what we did, and here's the reason we did it. This was the result. We are thinking we won't do it anymore unless we get feedback that changes our mind. Well, I don't know that and, we're there. That's well, kind of what they're doing well, by coming to this I, meeting. I kind of think then, we are there. Do we like the tables? Uh, uh, setting so, so aside just the turf and the cover, never do we heard. like the tables and chairs? Yes, if I believe only, let's they say never heard. Chairs, would that be more amenable to folks? I have no problem with that. Yeah, the tables and chairs, chairs, chairs don't block <laughs> anything. Okay, yeah. yeah. So that matches our observation. If, if, if I could wrap it up, because we've got other things to talk about, I'm going to summarize and say I'm happy to hear that you're thinking about taking, since we're not going to program it, I'm happy to hear you thinking about maybe taking down the turf. I don't care about the vinyl because it's just or you can go over it, drive on it, whatever you want to do. But the turf is an impediment for the winter. Um, that would be great because I think that would open up the space for the winter and then give pedestrians space to walk on. If in fact, um, you know, people need to come and tell us what they want to do. I hear loudly and clearly from Betty and from Eric who actually want to use the space and do use the space that, it, that it's, it bothers them still. Okay, they don't use it for the activity, they don't use it at all, and it's it's, it's an impediment to, to, to flow. I see what Betty's talking about with the impediment to flow. Mm -hmm. The little bit of time that I'm down there, I do see the dogs, I smell the dog urine. Um, if anything, my use of the space would be as a thoroughfare or jogging on it, right. and I don't go there. Um, so, because it's just, as, as Betty says, it's like, it's too crowded, I'm not going to go that way. Um, so, anyway... Thoughts would be maybe scale it down for the winter as necessary, you know, as necessary. But if in fact you're thinking of taking up the turf and it's not that expensive to take it up and then we try it again, great. Tables and chairs, hundred percent, leave them. Yeah. Um, yeah, just kind of make sure the plows can get over. Yeah, past yeah that's yeah. a big consideration. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the most important yeah, one for, sure they want to make sure that for keeping the, 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 what, the, the for any surface that you have, ensuring that you could it is able to be plowed and dusted or swept yeah. simply because if it can't, then it makes it worse for every pedestrian and yeah. accessibility yeah. user. Oh, yeah. Correct. Okay. So that would be great. And the whole idea of the QR code is for people to give feedback, right? Yes. That's, that's what you're asking for. I will, and send it, I will send it again over to Zach if you wouldn't mind putting it in our next newsletter. It's, yeah. it's a 12 question survey, some open field you for know, people to. If you can send it to the PTA system. How about, yeah, sure. Good. But how about to buildings to request that they put it on building link? You can hmm. contact every sure. building in the neighborhood. Ask them to put and it to out. see because if they're not in use, they'll, they'll play. I know exactly what they're doing with volleyball because my girls play volleyball. They just bump. It's not like they're playing volleyball, they're practicing there. But you don't always get it straight and you make a mistake and it's going into the street or it's going into someone's face. So it may not be the best place to be playing volleyball. 
or practicing volleyball. But anyway, all right, let's wrap it up. But I think we have a kind of way going forward, right? Yeah. I think and so. I, I like Eric's idea of coming back in the spring and giving it one less hurrah. <laughs> but in the meantime, when we're not programming it, let's get rid of the turf, AstroTurf, certainly. And um, as Tammy said, whatever the flooring is there, if, if it's going to interview with plows or get ruined by the plows, take it up too. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thank Craig. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Craig, thank you. All right. Next on our list. Thanks, is... everyone. Can, can Craig the legislation? Can yes. Craig okay. Thank just you. a quick sec. If we talk about the. Oh, hold on a second, Craig. Okay. Yeah. Craig, sorry. I don't know. Oh, there. Craig, you're still there. Craig is still there. Awesome, yeah. Craig. I just want to flip topics. Yeah, that's if fine. If you don't mind. That's okay. fine. So, Nick, it's one of those things that we start this discussion. The reason why I asked Craig to stay is um, when we're talking, we're going to flip up one for the Wagner Park Task Force membership and the okay. MOU. Oh, good. The program. Okay. Right. So, what I wanted to do was we have had a long series of opportunities in the past that have gone super well with the Battery Park City Authority um, that we've talked about, you know, you've engaged with the community on many, many projects. But one of the things that makes kind of the task force a little bit different is it allows us to be part of the team that decides on the use and the programming and the management, which is why I asked Craig to stay briefly, yeah. for the new building, right? This is something that we did back in 2010 on a very official basis with our all electeds and things like that. And an MOU came out of it. And it was really productive because it was a long partnership. It was very collegiate. Um, and I think it was very different. Having it be formalized, it was different than the working group we did on the bicycles. A product came out of it elected officials were involved and really set ourselves up for a long-term success with the community center and the ball fields. And that's what it was for. Did and that, that's yeah. what it was for at the time. Mm -hmm. And because what I realize is that none of our elected officials were in offices at that time. Yeah. Charles Fall doesn't even know about the history, which I want. we want to have the time to update him and things like that. And we want to just kind of get it really processed well now that we have a new chairman of the board, we want to make sure that, you know, we have this discussion with him as well. And so what I asked and what we have for you to take back is kind of one of the revisions from the MOU that came out in 2010. And just to kind of show you the work product that came out of it to understand oh, that, this, yeah, that, that's that, for you. Yeah, yeah. That, yep, that's that is just a little you. bit of it. It's the second. It's, like, it's, like, it's like the last. It was the second MOU that came out. It was a revision to the original one. Okay. But it's really very detailed and it's a very kind of formal thing. And it's what we wanted to be able to do to have a great amount of engagement and really ensure that it is a process that goes forward in a bit of a more formal way. And in there gives you, for example, who was part of the agreement because it was community board one it was our state assembly, it was our state senator, it was our council member, right? Mm -hmm. There was, it was a lot more robust. I thankfully have someone who was still involved then, yes, who's exactly. with us yes. now. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, but, Jeff Galloway became multitude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was, at the time, it was the Battery Park City Conservancy that was a partner mm -hmm. with yeah. the authority. And I would think that Craig, being the programming side, might, you know, you'll have to tell us, represented by who from BPCA, maybe it's, you know, Craig from programming. I want to make sure that I say this with Craig here because it's about partnership and it's about inclusivity and about really trying to move forward on things without saying squashing any opportunity. So, that's what I wanted you to kind of take from here was this kind of a thing. Um, and obviously we're going to be talking with assembly member fall and we're going to be talking with Brian and, and Marte, but it's an easy lift with them because we've done this before. So I think it's one of those things that's a nice 
way to dialogue and move forward. It's a brand new space. It's a brand new time. We're super excited about a new park and about what opportunities will come with it. And I think this is a good way that we can have those discussions about Wagner, the pavilion, and potentially even programming around Pier A, assumably that that stays within the purview of the Battery Park City Authority in the long-term plans. Okay. Okay. So can I talk about timeline for a second? Just mm -hmm. thank you for that. Um, I'm very glad representing who's on the agenda and I wanted to make sure that I circle back with Gwen after our, I think it was last month we talked about the pavilion. Mm -hmm. Um, and as Gwen has indicated, we are happy to do kind of a, a working group, some type of formulation of that. Um, what I was very encouraged to hear, not only from Gwen, she said, but also Justine, and this is important. We want to make sure that we can stick to the timeline that we've laid out. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what we are looking to do is the RPI, as we reported last month, was released, I think, October 4th. Responses are due on November 17th. Um, we would look to um, get those responses, kind of summarize and make a presentation, perhaps to be the city committee. I think that's where we laid it out last month, maybe in December. Mm -hmm. um, and then from then, I'm happy to have you all identify who it is you want to have participate in this group um, to give feedback on. I think it's at this point it's important that Craig is here. I agree on both parts. So it's it's the it's the operation side of the pavilion, which is envisioned to be some type of food service, doesn't necessarily need to be a football restaurant, but food mm -hmm. service. And we'd be interested to hear, not particular vendors, but from the community, what you guys think in terms of what type of food, what's the price point, what's the hours, <coughs> what, what the experience to be. That would be part of what the task force But also, yeah. from a programmatic perspective, yeah. on the other side of the pavilion, right now it's envisioned, as we have discussed, as a place that would be programmed as Six River Terrace as a 200 rector, where BPC would run programs um, and then can partner with folks. But if instead the community envisions it, no, let's partner with a different organization and have them maybe run it, those are the ideas we'd want to hear as well. Mm -hmm. But from a timing perspective, we want to make sure we have those conversations and then um, be able to hear the community's feedback and formulate that into an RP that we would issue roughly around the end of January. So it's a I think compressed, that's, not I, compressed, it's the timeline we explained, but given think, where we are, I want to make sure we have the yeah. pavilion ready to go. I that's think that's time. why we want to do, we want to get the task force going, have it be separate outside of the meeting schedule that we have. So it can be a far more robust and frequent engagement. So then that task force would come and give us updates in, I'd actually like to have it in place before the end of this month. Yeah. Um, so then they would come and give us updates, maybe as a report at the full board, if it's, if they've had the first meeting, you know, they would report out in December, they would report out at the full board again, and they'd kind of keep us up to date, much like had been done before about what's generally working on. And at the end of January would come out or February, depending on timing and things like that, an MOU of what was discussed and agreed upon that we would then vote on. And, and that, that, and sorry to interrupt you, but the MOU basically, that is the process that we did with the ball field. You well, the ball field. Uh, let let me clarify okay? a little yeah. bit about these M MOUs. Um, the, the one from this uh, 2010 was actually never entered into. Um, and um, although we operated largely consistent um, with the okay. Right. Um, I and have the earlier one I can get. I have the earlier one on my screen as, as, as well. The, 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 the original one was from 2000 or 2001. And um, the, the, the reason for it, the history is, was the development generally of those lots 23 and 24, which became the ball fields. Right. Um, and at that time, there were a lot of competing stakeholders that needed to be represented in the discussion, including elected, because the authority was giving up valuable uh, development uh, lots for something that wasn't planned in the original master plan uh, that became the recreational space in the ball fields and, and so forth. So there's a lot of competing constituents. Somewhat similarly, in 2010, um, there were a lot of competing and to some extent conflicting interests uh, in how that community center would be used. Mm -hmm. um, 
my sense is that for the pavilion, lots of people seem to be kind of generally on the same page. And so it's not so much conflicting, you know, um, uh, stakeholders, um, each wanting the space exclusively for themselves and so forth, which is what we were dealing with back in 2000 and in, in 2010. Um, it's a bunch of stakeholders now who may have different views on how this pavilion is to be used, but it's going to be the pavilion. I mean, that, that, so, so I think the complexity is a lot less. I mean, it's a relatively simple thing that we're doing. And um, I think we can be a lot more nimble than perhaps we were yep. way back uh, way back when. But it is important to get the community's input right. for how that space is going to be uh, used because we want to make the right decisions and not have to revisit the decisions in four years if the, uh, if the vendor falls flat on his or her face or you know, uh, whatever. Um, also to have conversations about the field space as it exists there because it used to be that the fields the enclosed space was supposed to be a non-active zone even though it was frequently used as an active zone mm -hmm. um, and the active zone was supposed to be to the right so having dialogues and conversations on that because active and passive recreation space um, and uses and and other conversations were i would mm -hmm. think really good to have a discussion as it relates to active passive and programming not limited to the building and pavilion but including the space as well yeah. and in in terms of the task force or working group whatever you want to call it interaction with the rfei responses um uh i, I think it is important that the working group have access to those responses to the extent that that can be consistent with procurement laws and, and so forth and if there needs to be nda signed uh that that's how we did it with the responses for the community center i mean i i sat in on meetings subject to ndas where we looked at asphalt green's response at other um uh proposed uh, operators responses so that we could give kind of direct feedback in ways that had it been filtered from us, we might not have even realized what the options were because the filterers maybe didn't have the same viewpoints as we did on certain things. And the RFEI strikes me as, I mean, it's asking for people to use their imaginations as they respond. Yeah. And so we may get some responses that none of us had ever really thought of before that I think having this working group have access to those responses to the extent that it can be done consistent with I, I, I think would be very valuable. I have, um, I just, I know Craig had a hard stop at like seven, so he's going to have to run, but I just wanted to thank him for hearing for Me that too. part. Craig. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have wanted, Craig, I only asked because I would not have wanted <clears throat> us to be talking about programming without you. You've been, in a, you know, it's a great part of the partnership and the community benefits that we enjoy and the public enjoys at large. So yeah, yeah. Thank Great. You. Thank you for uh, thank you for including me. Thank, thank you. you, Craig. Um, go ahead. And goodbye. Yeah. Um, I want to recognize Detta does want to say something, and I'm not sure what. But um, Detta, we're going to unmute you now, so then you have to unmute yourself. Or whatever. You're going to be invited to unmute. Yep. That's the way it works. And then you just speak. If you'd like to speak. You're, you've got to do it. You do it. You're to request to request sent, and I'll just wait and see. So, Debit, what I would suggest is what we the request is sent when you're ready to speak, just pipe up. Because you said you could last time you said you were paying attention, you were there, you just couldn't unmute yourself, which is totally fine. So, just leave her alone and see if she, if she gets it. And just un, unmute yourself when you're ready and when you can, because I do want to hear what you have to say in the meantime. Um, with the task force, um, so let's like in this as the committee now, and because well, I'm going to bring this to the executive committee to get this Tammy to authorize it. Mm -hmm. What do we want to see in it? We don't want to have 500 people on it. We want to make it as nimble as we can, but we also want to have some good representation. So, how do we want to pull that together? And what am I? Because I want to present this to you. And you're here now. So. Uh, you know, the fun thing about task forces is we could just pull it together and get it done. So I didn't yeah. hear from anybody specific. 
Um, but I would do the same thing as we did last time mm -hmm. after I speak to Senator Kavanaugh, Assemblymember Paul, and Marte's office, have them each send somebody, whether it's their offices or a representative that they would like. Um, I probably would open it up to Assembly Member Lee as well, simply because it, it's we serve everyone. We don't just serve Battery Park City. Um, so I do all the electeds in our neighborhood and anybody who comes forward. Representing the seniors Fantastic. and their need for space. Maybe space that will be leveled to the ground when they enter, Nick? Yeah. Talk about it then. Nick? Betty, did the you want to is, The design is on, yes, you'll have access level, to the level of entrance. Betty, did you want to as well? Yeah. Yeah, no, my comment was really to make sure that the representatives that are not elected officials represented a wide right. swath of people. So yeah. Correct. The north side is the north side. Absolutely. Is as well as people with children. Yes, that's Agreed. what we're looking to have, sure. exactly. But not have it be 30 people. It right. really needs oh, to be no, nimble. I agree. Yeah. No, I, I think we definitely need like, right. one person from the south, one person from the north, and that could be, I mean, you know, whatever, something like that. But we need, we to need have people it. who have time and attention. Yeah. And because as Nick said, it's going to be a bunch of meetings, but I'm thinking we should look to schedule. I think there's going to be a bunch of meetings. We can do it by phone. But it would yeah. mean oh, we yeah. have, yeah. Yeah. whatever form it takes, yeah. whether it's online or whatever. Yeah, it doesn't make a difference. It depends I, on what the first meeting leads to. Well, yeah, I do. What I, needs I, to follow. We can't predict. I do want to clarify a couple of things. So I, I, can't commit to having the responses directly to you. We can commit to having the responses summarized and presenting to you at the next touch point in early December, which if it makes sense, we can have as an agenda item on the BPC committee. What do you mean? Responses no, 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 you're missing the point. We want to have the task. The RBR responses. Right. No, you, 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 we, this is behind the scenes. We're not looking to have you present. Yeah. We're, we're looking to have the task force work with the Battery Park City Authority, as has been done before. Work whether NDAs it. need to be signed, like Jeff said, or not, and that it doesn't, you, it's not coming forward saying, okay, we've gotten five responses, here's all the details, because that potentially part of the procurement process is not actually eligible to be public yet. Um, so it's it would be the task force working in tandem, and then just coming up saying, we, you know, we've reviewed some of the R, you know, the RFEI responses, Here's the next step that the task force is doing as a general global, and then the report comes out at the end, like it has here. Yeah, what I'm saying is we're not going to be sharing the responses with the task force to review. We can review the responses and provide a summary of what came in, but to be able to go through the responses is not, I think, something that we are prepared for. Okay, and I guess what Sir? I would say is that we would, we would to do that, we would need to do and sign non disclosure agreements because it would not cover is yeah. because it would not be possible for you to share it without that. You'd have to have some promise on our part to hold us accountable, which I don't think would be an issue. It's been done in the past, it is what the Battery Park City Authority has done in the past. We're not breaking new ground, that's yeah. Yeah. My and, and, and I'm not asking you to hold your feet to the fire. I know you have to go back and discuss it, but um, it is something that was done, has been done, so we're not looking to reinvent a wheel it's just inventing a wheel for this because mm -hmm. rather than have us come into a meeting and be like okay let's go you have your minutes you have this and this and then it's all reported we can have a conversation behind the scenes we can flesh stuff out have more more detail and more robust discussion as Tammy puts it and then we have that summarized and we can put forth oh I still think we can absolutely have that conversation yeah. absolutely I'm just saying the responses themselves I don't know what we can be sure but we can discuss it Okay. But yes, we do we want to have a conversation? And in terms of how you guys can process, certainly, whatever you think is best in terms of fair representation from across the district, I'll certainly leave that to you. But we want to make sure the community's voice is heard and the feedback is taken for us then to potentially put an RFP. Okay. All right. And we can, we can talk more offline. Too. Yeah, sure. Be great. But yes, I think that I think there's a lot of value in having that conversation where we can kind of speak frankly about the things that we want to see mm -hmm. with, a, with a representative cross section of the district. Excellent. Thank you. All right, Detta, can you unmute yourself now? I invite her to unmute. She's in and out of service, she said. But she really wanted, she's got stuff, she's got Detta, okay, what is she saying? Wait, let's see. Could she text you? No, she can't. She Well, yeah, she wanted to be here and she's got something she wants to say. 
She's got no signal right now. So don't come back to me. Okay. Can you text? Yeah, text. Well, you Just can also, if you have the ability to text me what you want to ask or state, that's fine. I'm happy to do it. So I am trying to look, and it pops up on my watch, so it gets my attention. I am really sorry that we couldn't catch you before. Um, all right. I At this point, then, I think we're going to close down that part of the discussion and move on to the bill. Is that my question from the public? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, okay. Um, if I be on the committee or the Nick at this committee have kicked around in, my, in the past ideas about how to incubate or encourage or save small businesses in Battery Park City, you're going to have a space there that conceivably a small business, a small restaurant could operate in. Mm -hmm. um, and I've heard people at the authority say in the past the amount of money you make there by letting it out to the highest bidder is a rounding error for you. It's, you know, it's very thousand or depending on the yeah. dollar from your overall revenue. Since that's inconsequential, could you collaborate with this committee on, I mean, as a hypothetical, I'm thinking we re recently lost Picasso Pizza. That was an affordable, long time community mainstay. There's no way that Picasso <laughs> could bid against Von Richten <laughs> if he wanted the space. <laughs> if it's just dollars and cents, it's going to be Vong and not Picasso. Is there a way to set up a collaboration between this committee and the authority? To forget about letting it out to whoever writes the biggest check and That's instead a good idea. let it out to whoever would be most beneficial to the community. I think that's exactly the type of thing we want to hear in the, in the food working group. Like, that, that's what we would be looking to do. Uh -huh. so, no, yeah, it would be the task force first, and that's where we flush this out, where we hear what's going on, and then we go forward from there. And you got to go. I do. Sorry. I know. Yeah, but no, I think, I think that's exactly right. I think that, that's what we'd want to hear. Like, hey, there's, Madison Square Park has um, Shake Shack, just to use the example. Not that I don't want Shake Shack, but it doesn't necessarily be Shake Shack. It's, right. it's going to be a brand new, beautiful park, and we want it to be something that is obviously welcomed by the community, not just from a parks and program perspective, but it's a place that people really want to see there, not necessarily a specific venue. But a type of food, type of food, yeah. or you know, like a price point or an hours, or how they envision it interacting yeah. with the space. Um, but comes to cases, kind of the answer won't be, "I'm sorry, we have to give it to Fred because he bid more." You could actually say, "No, we're not giving it to Fred, even though he bid eight times as much because the community thinks." Yeah, I don't. I don't, I, 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 don't I don't think there, there's we're going in there with the prevailing notion that it has to be about how it It's about what we want, the community wants to see there. I think that's certainly very social. Thank you. Yeah, good thank question, you. Master. Thank you, and thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, Greta, I haven't heard from you, so I'm not going to call on you. <laughs> and um, all right, so next, now Senator Kavanaugh's bill. Okay, can we pull that up on the screen? Or you, I gave, I sent the link to you by email, just so this way people can see what we're talking about. <clears throat> I have it on my screen. I've got this. Really good. If you don't have it, I oh no, no, I don't like let's see if I can share my screen. And then go into this, like the more meetings. So that's right. Yeah, so now pull it up as if you download it. Yeah, well, it's actually the text is in is it's down, below. It's below if you keep scrolling. Oh, perfect. Yeah, you might have to expand. Yeah, there we go. There you go. Let me get rid of that after that. Okay, so we're going to share it on the screen and just get an idea of what Senator Kavanaugh has put out there. So people know um, the way it was written, or as it is written now. Um, here we go. As it is written now, it was presented in 2023. It passed in the Senate. It never got out of committee in the Assembly uh, just because of the, I'm not going to say what I want to say, but the mess, how's that? The confusion in the, in the Assembly about trying to pass the budget. So I have been assured by Charles Fall that he's going to bring it again, and he hopes that it will pass because it wasn't controversial. And um, so what I'm looking to do, and Senator Kavanaugh actually said at the full board meeting, I believe, was that if, if it's something that we want, we should push forward with it. And so Nick, so you know what this is. This is a variation on the affordability <coughs> for, for uh, people who people who are owners, eligible owners or eligible renters in Battery Park City, kind of focused on Gateway Plaza, or maybe it would actually encompass the Tribeca 
green building? Whatever's the one at the Tribeca Deluxe, Tribeca Green, whatever the one was where you guys were touting that you got. I think it was in Tampa. Point, thank you. Yes, I think that might actually apply if there's some sort of rent control agreement Quasi between the authority. Stabilized. Yeah. Or, or some agreement between the authority and the landlord to keep the rent on some of the apartments low. I think it would the apply to them as well, I think. Yeah. Um, but a couple of questions in here. Number one, I think Cora um, Fung pointed out to me that Battery Park project area is the title or what is referred to. That is the official name in the Senate for Battery Park City or somehow. Um, yeah, exactly. Whatever it was first, so right. that means Battery Park City. It does not mean Battery Park. Yes, you no. know, where Castle Battery Clinton Park, is. This, in this instance, the context is Battery Park Project Area is Battery Project Park. Area is Battery Park City. Yes, exactly. I try to make the distinction so many times. Times, I know. Park, yes. Yes. Right. Agreed. So yes, it drives me insane too. But um, but yes, in this regard, this is correct sentence. Um, I'm not going to read it to you guys because I think you should. I mean, be able maybe to. maybe we should summarize because a lot of people may not remember what this was all. About. Yeah. So, so can everybody get a copy of this page? I, it's like a single to... page with the bill on it, but uh, yeah, front and back page. It's it's there. It tells you what what. Oh, and that. Yeah, if you want to, I'm looking for it. They have. There's I not a, a, there weren't as many copies there. around oh. as of the the staples thing. So, so just read it. You yeah. guys may remember this from um, about a year and a half ago. I think is when this legislation, uh, in its first incarnation, came to us, and it was part. Originally, what we have here was part of the Spree and Dree bill that was ultimately passed and has been signed into law by uh, the governor. But the concept here, and it's very similar to a program. The Battery Park City Authority is in the yes is in the process of implementing. Yeah. Um, and I'll have some questions to you, Nick, about that. Um, but basically, in concept, this would uh, it's easiest to see for the condo uh, owners, and there's a similar uh, idea for the renters, but it's easier to describe for the condo owners. Is that for condo owners, well, all condo owners in Battery Park City pay a portion um, of their maintenance fees or however they're uh, described in, 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 your, uh, in your arrangements with your condos, a portion of that goes towards the ground rent that the building pays to the Battery Park City Authority. Um, and what the concept of this legislation is, is that for those um, uh, condo owners meeting an income test, that their income is not greater than X, that their, uh, the portion of their maintenance that they pay as ground rent would be frozen in time, um, effectively, um, to whatever it was in the base year. And in the legislation, the base year was, in this version, was 2022. Yeah, they may update it to 2023. I don't know what they're going to do. Right. But... And, and sort of conceptually, that if you live there, and today you don't meet the, the, the income test, but you retire in two years or you lose your job or whatever, and you then meet the income test, uh, your ground rent would then be effectively frozen as whatever it was in the year before you lost your uh, job. Mm -hmm. And the way it's effectuated is that the authority would be uh, essentially reimbursing the condo owners well, the difference between what their frozen ground rent was supposed to be and what, what, it, act, it, yeah, what actually act, goes whatever it actually so each is. it's kind of yes that makes sense and the same thing with the renters if their portion of their rent that was attributable to the ground rent which is like yeah. a very complicated formula to figure out whatever that would be they would get a check back is what i'm assuming in year one they get a rebate after that it just becomes that they end up paying they less. We figure out what that amount is. And as long as they, I think they have to, the way this is written, I see they would have to certify every two years. Assuming the first year they get, they get the income test, they sign something that says they expect the income to stay low the following year. The authority says, okay, no problem. The following year, they have to certify again to say we expect the following year. So they're always looking. It's not like forever. If someone wins the lottery, they're not gonna stay, they're not gonna stay frozen. If someone is um, for some reason disabled or whatever, and that's why they've got the lack of income um, or lower income, um, and but then they suddenly get above the threshold, they're paying 
Um, and, what's and the, go ahead? Sorry. And the threshold in this legislation is 150 percent of AMI. Yes. Um, which um, Senator Kavanaugh described as what he thought was the highest that could possibly pass. Yeah. In legislation, uh, and it did pass in the Senate. And it did pass in the Senate. Yes, yeah, exactly. It did pass in the in the Senate. The um, Battery Park City Authority is in the process of implementing a very similar program, but the AMI limit there is 130 percent. And Nick is based on what it says on the web the, the authority's website. I gather the the authority believes there's some kind of legal limit that they can't surpass. That apparently affordable housing programs that uh, that they that they looked at, but that's just not accurate. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean that statement statement is not accurate. It does can go up, can go up to 160 percent of AMI. That yeah. may not pass in, in a yeah. I, I don't body. know. Just, I don't know. But in any event, it's 130 I mean, percent. I know I've signed up for New York Connect. Okay. And my kids have. I've seen what they get, and there are places that have. The, 180 percent of AMI if you qualify. Oh, you mean in the regular affordable housing program? In the regular formal housing program. So it's not above the pall to have it higher than 130 or 150 percent of AMI. But okay, um, step one. And then step two, one of the issues that, I mean, and again, this is off, it's not part of this legislation. And I think that, that it maybe is um, Senator Kavanaugh kicking the can because at the end of it all, the bill says any implementation in the the fine points will be figured out by the BPCA. One of the things that um, I know that the BPCA has put forth to the condo owners is that, and I would imagine, I don't know how you translate this to the renters because it makes no sense, but for the condo owners, um, if your rent is frozen at $3 per square, or $10 per square foot, let's say, um, and then it goes for 10 years so that had your neighbor who's not such so frozen is now up to $12 per square foot, when you sell your house, you've got to pay back all the difference. Well, that's not and, the way. And that's not what it says here. And, no. and and I like the fact that it doesn't say that because I think that is a further burden on people who are um, struggling. How's that? I think it's less as well because it only applies to units that are already affordable. It doesn't apply to units generally. But with the ones that are already affordable, that tell me that I'm wrong. If the apartments are already affordable and the people who qualify, their rent won't go up. No, their rent will go up. It just won't go up as much because the only thing that's mm. affected is, is the portion, portion that's a, uh, which, in a, in a which is likely to be a very small tiny proportion of the overall rent. It may be a valuable program as well, but it's more complicated. Yeah. And whatever we, I, I think we should discuss the, the condo piece uh, okay. first because it's in concept, it's simpler. Uh, okay. To get our arms yeah. around. Um, so, so you Betty, had questions, or anybody have questions? I see Betty's question. I, 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 I do hope the condo part says when the person sells or is deceased or whatever. Get rid of the condo, if they pay the back amount that they did, why do you say that? Because I've been messing around with, do I just give away my assets in advance of my death? I can have zero income. I can do that very easily. That isn't going to change where I live in the condo. It just means I'll pay less to the authority and, mm -hmm. and I will get benefits. Thing. If you got rid of all your assets and you had no money coming from your assets in terms of income, you wouldn't be able to afford to pay your. Uh, that's not. I mean, well, I, 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 I mean, you, you're speaking to you, Betty. talking about income, not assets. Yeah, so, you're right? about income, and yeah, it's, it's all about income. No one's looking at your assets. Well, this well, is well, income, well, right? Well, I don't know about that. It doesn't say anything about assets here, but certainly in the affordable housing programs in the city of New York, because I've signed my son up for NYC Connect yeah, as well. Yeah. They certainly ask you about your assets. Uh, what is NYC Connect? I just signed up. What is, N okay, what is NYC Connect? It's a affordable housing. Lottery. Oh, the lottery. Okay. Okay. That's why I'm dealing only with the condo. So I'm saying, otherwise, when the person sells, it's the case of death, as it will be probably in my case. 
it's only the, the heirs that benefit from the money that was paid because they didn't spend it. Unless, Betty, what if in the situation, which is what is not unreasonable, to stay in the apartment to pay the payments, you now start Condo. take condos, condo apartment, yeah. um, to, you start taking out um, loans against the property. And all of a sudden, when you're done, your loan is greater than, well, the, than the amount you'd sell it for, because as, the, as, as <clears throat> with all these things, we don't know what's going to happen with that property, and then the authority can't get paid back. Because they're going to be having this lien on this property, the property can't sell because they can't pay off the mortgage and pay the Battery Park City Authority back. I think that is an encumbrance on the property that's unfair. And what the ground rent does is, is logically, upon the sale or death or transfer of property, the ground rent jumps to whatever everybody else is. So the authority is not losing out forever. It's a period of time where they're not getting that jump in, in ground rent from those people. And then when it is sold, then they look at the income of the new resident owner. Well, yeah, well, right. so, so yeah. Let, let, me, let me just clarify. These are valid debating points, mm -hmm. um, but I, I want to just clarify what point is relevant to what proposal. Okay. The legislation itself does not have the concept of paying back any subsidy. The le what, the le what the legislation, the concept in the legislation is that Assuming you satisfy the income test, your um, your ground rent is effectively subsidized such that it does not increase uh, over time uh, above what you were paying at the time that you felt qualified, this in, yeah. qualified at this uh, income level. Mm -hmm. Now, the rent itself does not change. You just get a subsidy to pay the rent. So when you sell, or when you cease to qualify, yeah. your rent is whatever the rent is. Yeah, the it's ground rent just, just jumps up to what it is. To whatever, to whatever. For the next person. For the next person. For the next, for the next person. person or for yourself. Right, if, if you don't if, qualify, it yeah, goes up. Yeah, your income increases. If you benefit the value of your condo went up during that period, because no one says you any benefits of growth in the value of your condo is all yours. But it wouldn't go up in the time because the person who's buying would be subject. You're not getting a benefit. Like, so if I qualify at, let's say, 140% of AMI and Jeff is at 160% of AMI, at the end of the day, we have the exact same apartment right next to each other. Our purchase prices would comparatively be the same because the ground rent of the buyer is exactly the same. Do you understand? Yeah, like you're Huh? I guess so. But uh, no, I, 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 <laughs> I guess so, because to me, I, I don't see the windfall because whatever th there isn't. No, but you've received a sub. You have received a yes. subsidy that I did not. Correct. And and, and uh, that enabled her to stay in the community. Same exactly. exactly. Which is our goal here. Probably the we don't know that, especially because the ground rent is going to jump on it higher the minute somebody else buys it potentially potentially yeah. so that makes it more a more expensive well, apartment the and the ocean's going to rise separate. well no 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 but whatever it is whatever it is to let's say the new person is wealthier and is or has higher income it'll go to whatever and is going to pay more the value of that apartment is less than maybe one in Tribeca or Chelsea because they're going to pay and, a and that's a given. Rent. I mean, that that plays out, and we know that. We know that's it's more expensive. Exactly our problem. Yeah, yeah. It's well, cheaper to buy here. Well, because it's all cheaper as a result. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. There's there's yeah. a benefit there. Yeah, exactly. There's a benefit. Yeah. That yeah. that's that's the key here. Yeah. But at the end of the day, there's not like so, someone. If if, if the, you're correct, the subsidy would have is have inured to the subsidy. But that's the same thing as people in, like you and your neighbor now. You in Gateway, and I'm not even speaking to you yeah. personally, but you, uh, someone in Gateway who's quasi rent stabilized, and then the person next to them who is not, you know, you're talking a huge difference in rent. Ah, you, you, you know, you're not looking no. at it and saying, they're not looking no, at you well, and saying, you suck because you're getting so much less than me. No, I mean, I, we're, I think we're in danger of mixing apples and oranges no. and talking about a lot of different related but distinct concepts. These rentals are very complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Jeff had said. Um, so let's stick to the condos, and I, I, I think there's, there's a couple of points that we as a committee need to address. Okay. Um, Senator Kavanaugh basically asked us 
do we support this legislation or not? Yes. Uh, and if there is support for the legislation, he will reintroduce it next year. His memory of our committee's reaction to this legislation um, is that it was somewhat negative because it was at our request that it was taken out of the scree and dree legislation when he introduced that a year and a half ago. And his further memory is that the reason this committee didn't like this legislation is that we did not want an income test. And that's mm -hmm. why it was taken out. Now that's a, I think that's an oversimplification of, yeah, we discussed all those issues at the meeting way yeah. back then, um, but I think we asked it to be taken out simply because there were lots of issues to discuss, not because we had come to any conclusion on any of these I issues. I think that's correct. I think um, we really were agreement, in agreement on Scree and Dree getting pushed through. Uh -huh. We didn't want to wait on that, and it was oh, urgent that that get done. Right. And the urgency of, on this particular issue was less so. So and now we have something of a clean slate. Yes. Do, do we like this legislation or not? Would we like to see it changed? It's very similar to what the authority is itself proposing, but in, in my mind, and Nick, you can correct me if I'm wrong, there are, I, I believe, two main distinctions as a practical matter between this legislation and what the authority is proposing to do essentially unilaterally. Uh, one is that the income test is lower. You have 130%, this is 150%. Um, and the other is this concept of, does that subsidy have to be paid back when the apartment is sold? Right. Mm. Under the legislation, the subsidy does not have to be paid back. It's just not addressed. Well, yeah. and therefore it doesn't it's have silent. to be paid it's back. It's silent, it's, yeah, it's silent. It's, yeah. it's, it's silent. Uh, whereas under the authority's proposal, and I, mean, I haven't heard all of the authorities' rationale, but it, I assume it's a taxpayer um, uh, uh, minding the taxpayer's money perspective mm -hmm. of someone who's given a subsidy for the purpose of keeping them in their home. You've accomplished that. The new person doesn't need that subsidy. Uh, and so you're, you're essentially loaning them uh, uh, the, the, the subsidy until such time as they sell the apartment. Uh, and, and you can kind of view that as kind of a revenue neutral uh, proposal in a way that the legislation would not be revenue neutral. Um, but Okay, okay, I see. Uh, and um, the, the authority would be giving up something if they didn't collect. I'll talk about the tax, but it's not really a tax. It's collecting. Yeah, it's, it's collecting it's, what it for. for it's, it's it's getting the subsidy paid back. It's like the way, I mean, lots of government programs do this, and I don't generally like them. The way Medicaid works for for people who are older, you right, have to pay that right. money back. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you die. So am I hearing that the Medicaid. authority <laughs> it is in agreement with a lot of this, but they just want to recoup the money that. Is, they don't get. I don't speak for them. I'm just having yeah. the distinctions. I mean, is that what the I understanding? Would, what I would say is, except for the 150 versus 130, this is similar to what the authority has put forth in multiple multiple mm -hmm. times to say, hey, what about this? Now, not like what about this? Let's sign the dotted line with the condo mm -hmm. owners, okay? But what about this? And I've also heard the authorities say that 130 is what they came up with, but that's not a firm number. It just we never got past the well, fighting. That over leads to my taxes. question for Nick. As I understand it, an RFP was put out on that program last spring, I guess, for operators to administer it or something. Or what Which is this? Program? Good question. The authorities. Program. So thank you for that. Yeah. And it's mostly right. Justine, to your point, yes, we said for some time, certainly, that for um, homeowners who, who need assistance. There would have to be some type of means testing involved. Yes. Folks who are in Battery Park City, who own in Battery Park City, and um, you know are really kind of facing a challenge to um, stay here because of escalating costs, or in some cases with a grant rent as not even resets but step ups. We certainly do it as a responsibility to make sure that we have an opportunity to try and help folks stay here to the extent that they qualify based on certain income levels. So Jeff, you have reference. We put an RFP last year to develop. A ground rent assistance assistance program for homeowners. 
we would expect to have it. I don't have the exact time frame, but about forever. I can give you a rough timeline. Probably the early part of next year, we should have a program developed that would that would spell that out. Specific details I'm laying on specifically because lit light, I should say, because I haven't been directly involved with it. I could follow up with more precise timing, but that's the idea. It achieves, I think, or has at least in spirit trying to achieve a lot of what Senator Kavanaugh bill does in legislation. Um, because again, as we have said, we, we certainly recognize that there's a role for us to play for folks who really are having a hard time with increases in law enforcement by our homes. But we do want to make sure that there is some type of means testing involved, which I think, now that you mention it, I recall it as well. One of the objections, perhaps not the only one, was that some folks didn't want any means testing whatsoever. Right. And to the authority, we, we need to make sure that if we are going to essentially use public funds, um, to help folks out, which in we agree there's a role to do, it needs to be some type of means tested on some type of means tested foundation. So at the risk of being but I will get you more precise time than we might expect. Um, I'd have that, that the contours of the program laid out. At the risk of being strung up by some people in Battery Park City. Yeah, I know. No, no, no. I agree with you that means testing Contestant. is necessary I if, if you're going to give a freeze of a ground rent. Yeah. That makes I mean, sense yeah, to me. You want something, you got to give something. You got to give something. And that, that, that makes sense. And it shouldn't be available to everybody. That makes sense. because. Other things that we're asking for doesn't need to be means tested, but this certainly does make Should sense. Be. So that that's a fair uh, thing. But tell me more about this ground rent assistance program. Is that the? Uh, that's basically this thing. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's essentially, not not exactly. No details. 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 A few different details. But the idea is, as we've said, um, and if, for those of us who've been following for some time, there are, I think not unfounded concerns about costs going up generally. Um, yes. uh, ground rent for a lot of the buildings goes up on a very kind of steady incline, but in some cases, some buildings are paying a lot more in ground rent, some buildings, kind of buildings especially are paying a lot less. They're all on a schedule to get to roughly the same amount in like 2040 with some other buildings that were not part of the agreement back in 2011, 2012. We're going far back into the past. Jeff knows this as well as anybody. Um, but the idea was understanding all that to the extent that there are homeowners in Battery Park City who are uh, in need of assistance and really wish to stay in their homes. The authority recognizes that there's a role for us to play in trying to um, preserve affordability and expand it where it exists, if not only in the rental place, like in the case of Gateway and Trebek, but also, also for homeowners. So if you are a homeowner who is maybe near retirement or on a fixed income, bought years ago and you um, you know can demonstrate that there is a need and it's fair to say the authority recognizes that we want to play a role in, in helping you stay uh, in the neighborhood but you know like anything else there will be details how that would take shape what the AMI level would be um, what the revisions would be uh, for paying it back if you pay it back when you let's say then sell your unit down the road um, those are things that need to be worked out, and that those are things that the ground assistance program would be aimed at, um, kind of working through when it's rolled out. So I will have some more precise time for you, but I want to say the first half of 2024. Let me circle back with the. But yeah, we announced this back in. In May, is it? I'm finding here on your website. I think, website. It, was, I think it was. Battery Brook City releases public affordability yeah. survey and RFP for administrator of needs based ground rent program. Yep, that's what was the date on it? May. Fourth, yeah, yeah May fourth. Yeah. So, so, yeah, question I have about, but it was, I think it was May fourth. I think it was. Yeah, I'm looking. I mean, the website. It was May fourth. I think it was 2022, though. I want to make sure. I don't yeah, think it was, it wasn't 2023. It yeah, it wasn't. Okay. It wasn't six months ago. It was. Um, I believe it was 2022. I want to understand um, kind of the RFP angle uh, to this. Um, it's basically for a a, a firm to run. The program. Hmm. So so does, the does that suggest, you know, without uh, implying a position one way or the other on Kavanaugh's legislation, does that suggest that were his legislation to pass, the um, administrative complexity would be such that you'd have to have one of these organizations to figure out how to run it, or, or is this RFP asking for? 
advice on just the policy of how to structure the pro, you know, what, what, what are the parameters of the program well, so, the as opposed to how to administer some program that the parameters think, have already been defined. I think we are envisioning our program as not needing legislation to exist. So if the legislation didn't exist, it doesn't mean we wouldn't do this. If, and if the legislation did exist, it would not hamper your program. Well, it would be, it would be what the legislation yeah, just, says it is. You'd probably have to, you know, you have to make sure that there was some type of reconciliation between what one yeah, thing said the other. And, and, and I mean, it, it does, may make things more it does say that sure. not the authority shall offer to each homeowner grant, blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, I swear I read this. Yeah, remember, just to see, I'll give you the little, little job you're Oh, within 180 days. This was a thing that we put the survey out about. Yeah, I think it was 2020. And certain yeah. people were saying, do not, under any circumstances, answer the survey. Do nothing. We're like, guys, we're literally trying to do that was program. 2022, whatever. This is around the time of the. Uh, and, and you still don't know the results of the RFP? Was it, it was 2020. No, now it's being. The RP is out. Program is being developed. So you already got So learning. you've chosen a okay. candidate for the RFP. Okay. Can I just make an observation? It would seem to me that what you need is a program written that someone or two people administer. You don't necessarily need an outside company to take it on and run it. You need the software that has all the parameters built in. Maybe it gets through. You know reviewed and updated every year but then you don't need the highest level people running it you know they get people's tax information from somewhere maybe from the state and put it in enter it maybe it's a download and then the answers come out as to what each unit is going to be charged and i say this out of my employee benefits okay. administration background that you know, there's, there's so many programs that get to be run, but with software, the right software, you can run anything. With, you know, as I said, without a, a tremendous hierarchy overseeing. My observation. Um, so, so do we have a, a handful of us have been talking on this. Uh, what, what's the sense of the committee members about legislation? This, this is actually awkward legislation because I'm not sure that many of us could actually vote on this without having to I'd have to sit and quietly read this. I mean, uh, to, but the concept, the concept, the concept of, I love. Um, I, I would have to actually see what the numbers are for renters. Well, no, it looks the same. Well, it, oh, well, what do you mean the numbers are for renters? It's how many more. people? No, what the dollars? The dollars very small for, for gateway people. Are the it makes no sense because you're already uh, you're already in a better place. Perhaps in their if, mind, if that's well, what I. But but again, you're going to vote against. Like them in the <laughs> right, yeah. Somebody. No, that, that could be input that we get catalog. Yeah. Think that there and may be that the renter piece doesn't make sense. May, may well in concept. How, is the rent? I, I have I have yeah. renters income oh, yeah. known. It's, it's, yes. Is the renters income known? Say again. Is the renters income even known yet? Yet. Of course they are. Yeah, because they pay taxes too. Individually, but has anybody an analyzed, maybe in the process of doing that gateway deal well, they or so ago? No, it's never been You didn't it's have been people's means tested. In, in, yeah, right. It's never been means so tested. And the condo owners is not means tested A whole new starting either. point. I mean, well, we're what, kind of, it's, it's unknown for everybody. That's yeah, the right. difference. I'd have to look at the so legislation again, and I apologize. It's been a while since I looked at it, but I, I am confused about the rental as well. Yeah. I just feel like, like, let's say there's, Building X in Battery Park City, that's a rental building. If, and Justine, again, this is a philosophical conversation. Mm -hmm. If hypothetically DPCA said, okay, guess what? Building X in your rental, you no longer have to pay this ground rent. Right? No, no, oh, no, but that's, that's not what it's saying. That's not how it works. The building would still charge its people the rent that it can, that the market can bear. Well, that's what I want. That's what I would like to see. No circumstance that this, it doesn't, you know, DPCA has no role in setting my I can enlighten you a little, I can enlighten you a little bit. On how to live. I just don't have right, but I mean, so that, makes, that makes sense, right? We don't have a role in setting rental prices. Correct. No, the um, or right. well, for the matter at the individual level. That's that's, that's exactly right. The, the way the legislation works, and I I don't recall if this is the way the Battery Park City Authority proposal works either. But on condos, the way the legislation works is the ground rent that the building pays is the same. Um, 
So yeah, it has to be. We have to pay. So especially in year one, right, because it's we have we have, have to pay it. Yeah. And technically, the ground rent that every individual, including those who qualify for this program, pays is, is the, the same. same as it was. Nothing is going to change in year one. And dip, we'll even and in, in year and ever. Right. Yeah. Um, what what happens is that the authority basically provides a subsidy to the condo owners uh, who are, you know, that, who meet the income level requirement to essentially reimburse them for a portion of their ground rent. They still pay the ground rent right, to the condo owners. Right. To the condo owners. They still, the condo owner itself, right? You know, I'm at 140 AMI and my rent gets frozen at, effectively frozen at 2022 levels. I still pay the 2023 rent. I still pay the 2024 rent. But under this proposal, Bowery Park City Authority pays me the difference between 2023 and 2024. So if the ground rent increases by the 3% a year or 64% a year, or whatever, <laughs> it gets kicked back to the people who can't afford it. I mean, I'm kind of oversimplifying the legislation. But no, but that's what it but is. I get, that's, that's from, I get that from the homeowner perspective. From the, the homeowner perspective. Like the, same. the rent is the same thing, but it's more complicated because rent is inherently more complicated. The yes. way that it works on the rent situation is the tenant still pays whatever the rent is mm -hmm. um, as far as the landlord goes but the the authority reimburses the tenant for some portion of that rent that's attributable to ground rent which is going to be some small portion of the rent in, in gateway it's going to be a small right, portion of the ground rent because gateway yeah, only right. has well, maybe it's it, about 300, 300 apartments that are now about that are still quasi rent stabilized out of how many, and the gateway is ground rent for years, 300,000. Know, I mean, you could figure it out. It's, it's going to be $100. <laughs> so right, if, that, is, if that, if that. Which, which is one reason that although hey, from hey. a consistency perspective, I understand why Kavanaugh included yes, the renters, but, it's but not, from a practical dollars and cents it's not perspective, helping anybody. number one, the only apartments that are covered to begin with are already affordable units. It's already either a, yeah. a quasi rent stabilized unit or some other unit that is governed by a stabilization type agreement. That's what the legislation says. Right. 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 That's the only ones that are so they're already in an affordable right. unit. And that which we that they are looking to expand in case right. we can, like for the point. Yeah, right. it, exactly. Yeah. Other ones. Uh, okay. Wait. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, let's just assume that this is okay, because. You're, you're honestly just making it more easier. <laughs> uh, uh, when when do they get paid the rebate? There's At the end in, of the year is what I, I gather. There's nothing in here that says the rebate will be given in the next day or within X amount. Maybe that needs to be added. Yeah, maybe that needs to be it added. It says so within 180 good. days the battery, the authority is supposed to confirm everything. Of the effective date, <sighs> procedures for applying. Yeah, I guess there's a decision. Well, I mean, and to be eligible, yeah, those you, you eligible in the next class succeeding critique, year. Which is, yeah, if we know, like this, we want them to pass this, then yeah, we, yeah, it needs to be clarified. Clarified, yeah. Clarification on, on, on which this point. I, mean, I, I did. I, I did speak to Kavanaugh's office before the meeting, yeah. and they said, yeah, so they're open to suggestions on any of that. Those so, I don't know how much. And Betty, if you did, I can't see you behind. Um, which one? I don't know how many people benefit from this. I don't believe I do, based on what I'm reading here and what I looked at for our area. So I can I can tell you that in the north, it'll be unlikely that anybody except for the renters that are there under some quasi rent stabilization would apply. In the south, the older the building. There'll be people who apply, who qualify, yeah, yeah. but not a lot. For people who own, own. Yeah. primary residents, owner occupied, there will be people who who, who so, qualify. So here's one caveat: I rent from an owner. In a condo so, building, so you are no, they won't because they're, they're not, not owner, they're not oh, owner occupied. It, it, yeah, it has to be owner occupied. As you're you're resident. Resident. primary resident. Yeah. Primary yeah. Resident. So you don't get any advantage. You get no, 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 you don't get that advantage. kind of a situation. Betty? I would not support the legislation moving forward simply because it really needs to be worked out with the authority with what can be done, what are any of the legal obstacles that occur, because they do need to harmonize what they plan on doing. Uh, otherwise, there's no point. You have the group that's administering it, the authority going a different, not being in lock sync with the legislation. 
And I feel, well, as I've said, I completely disagree. As a condo owner, I have a sandwich in my condo. I live in an international financial market. I hear people in my building talking about that they do finance all the time. Trust me. They know how to move around money. You know, people in your building won't qualify. Moving around money. money. It's, it's about income. They, I, they will not be able to qualify because the, I, have confidence. I have confidence it's, that it's about income not that. assets a lot of the I people mean, who you're talking that, about if they own their apartments as yeah. llc's which is what they do to oh. save taxes or do something else that that's apply. not owner occupied i'm not talking i don't mean i don't mean like the, in my mouth because i didn't did i say they were llc no okay no mine's owner occupied and they're not going to be the reality is if there is equity, not only do I agree with the authority, it should be the responsibility to get back money from gains when the property is sold for the benefit that they got. There's no reason it isn't recaptured. The reality is, in my building, and I know it's going to be in others because I was told that, there's a flip tax. When the condo is sold at 1% of the sale price, and it's probably going to go up, but it's 1% now, goes to the authority anyway. It's not as if these various condo owners don't owe some money back at the end and aren't aware of it. We're going to find out soon. It's going to get a benefit that may help you on a week to week or month to month. You don't have to go take out loans. You have to take a reverse mortgage. You don't have to. Why should your family or whatever inheritance place have a benefit at the end because you were allowed to not draw down your assets? Well, can I, can I go ahead, Marianne? You mentioned people who seem to have a lot of money and maneuver and hide it. I mean, that may be fraud. And perhaps if people are putting in and their tax returns are being looked at, that's going to come to light, number one. Number two, this is not an asset. It's not looking at your assets. It's looking at your income. I'm not talking about assets. I'm talking about you're saying asset should be protected while getting no 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 what, I, what I mean the asset of the home I mean for when Battery Park City started it was, a lot of middle-income people moved in and for many middle-income people their home is their primary asset now I know there's a lot of rich financial type people there now and they probably <coughs> won't be, be eligible their it income's be going to be too high they would not be I'm eligible for class, this. You don't need to talk to me about middle class. I'm right. very aware of it. The reality yeah. is it's my biggest asset too. That doesn't mean it affects my income. It doesn't mean I can't control my income. And there are lots of reasons why a lot of elders do give up their assets in advance. There are lots of reasons why. Understood. Understood. So those are choices that people who have the ability to make the choices sure, do. Not everybody has that opportunity, and those are the that. people who are looking to protect. For me, I feel like it would be a win to help some people stay in their homes in their home. and have yeah. the opportunity to well, age in place. Them, but at the end, if there's value that they sell for, why should they do that? That's not part, either one way or the other. It's not part of this legislation. That's going to be up to the authority to shut down people's lives. Well, wait, but the authority has to comply with the legislation. I mean, it just doesn't. It doesn't say they can't. It just okay. It's okay. I mean, the legislation is silent. It doesn't say they can't. <laughs> okay. It says right. that that they have 180 days to um, implement it or promulgate procedures. So in my mind, that's a good thing, Eric, to get them. Well, I think it was you who said there's no time frame. The time frame to me is this is putting their feet to the fire to, to do something. Well, the, the 180 days just says to set standards for reviewing applications and certifications. They only have 180 days to make sure that what you're giving. And making they payments get, make and making yeah, payments to applicants it. found to be eligible, the 180 days. It, it, in the next less, succeeding less year. part of it, the right. end. So I think that that would be found to be eligible and expected to be eligible because it's looking at two years. Yeah. A current so I, I, year I think that's it, but it's reasonable year. to clarify. But I think that that is some rubric and some framework. framework. Um, uh, needless to say, I disagree with Betty, but okay, go ahead, Matthew, and then let's next. But my point was, I disagree with moving forward with the legislation until it's worked out with the authority and there is more harmony between what's going on. I, I hear you. Um, uh, this... Wait, wait, stop. Oh, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call on Matthew. 
Go ahead, Matthew. Why, if you suddenly got religion on means testing when you've done non means tested affordability protections in the past? Who? The party? Yeah. I feel like this is not a new conversation, but can you clarify? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I'm wrong. Yeah. And I'm imagining that you have done affordability protections in the past that were not means yeah, tested. Okay. It seems kind of arbitrary that now that's an urgent priority. So we did Gateway Plaza, which was, means was no means tested. Was not means tested. It was four people that had been longtime Battery Park City residents, I think, that were in the building prior to 2009. Nine, yeah. We did Tribeca Point, which was means tested. It's deeply yeah. affordable apartments. 70 or so units for the next 50 years. It was going to expire in 2029. We were able to negotiate with the building to extend it out to 2069. And those are deeply, that's 30 to 40 percent of AMI. Which is perfect. Which is great. And those are truly deeply affordable units. So the yeah. idea is um, we are. Uh, they may get a okay. benefit from right. this. We, we have to, that might be somebody who get a benefit because they, they're, they're, a, they're a rental building. Yeah. Yeah. Tobacco point. Okay. Tobacco point. Yeah, so yeah. Exactly. I can point to that wasn't that they have a means income, a, a means testing with the, the gateway deal, but the, yeah. uh, the idea there was the gateway has a long history back to when it was first built. Correct. Plus, no means the testing. system, which is again not even rental adjacent, quasi rental adjacent because it's like this one off that exists between the authority and the frac directly. Yes. All the other um, agreements that we have worked on or continue to work on. Um, have a means tested component. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, uh, so we, we can't do a resolution anyway this week because of right. technicalities and so forth. So we should move on. We should move on, but I'd like to get Let's a basic shift. sense you know, to people. Continue the I, you know, mm -hmm. sort of we, we don't have anything to write up quite yet, but I'd like you guys to think about it more. Um, and come back with an idea and even if you're a renter and you don't think it's going to help you What is your position about condo owners? If you're a condo owner and you don't think it's going to help you What is your position about renters or other condo owners what might help and I would like to so my position is I'm going to I, I, I Understand where Betty's coming from. I hear what she's saying. Thank you for sharing that Betty. Um, I don't think that anything here is um, tying the hands of the authority, except for the 150 to 1 to 130 of AMI, as in the category listing, and that's something we can talk about offline, Nick, and see if there's any, you know, what the deal is. We can talk about it, and we can also get Senator Gavin on the conversation beforehand, and, just to get a sense, or you guys can, if you yeah, want you, to figure out why. Why is he okay? And if, if if the Senate's able to pass 150, I remember the conversation we had in committee. Back when, when I was even pushing for 160 at one point, he got to 150. He didn't think he could get higher than that, and it did pass in the Senate. So that, and that, and when are they back in session? January. Is it January. So, so we can we, we no, we don't have to. We're not going to do it today. We have a written up. This is a discussion to remind everybody and get it going. We'll have a resolution next time. Like and, December, um, yeah. Yeah, and so my 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 push and my request to this committee is a resolution to support the legislation, coming forth with some clarity. Um, we can speak to Senator Kavanaugh and talk about more of what we can clarify. But at the end of the day, I, I do note that it seems like there will be little benefit in your pockets to any renters and in, in gateway. I don't know the numbers for um, the Tribeca building, Tribeca Point. I don't know the numbers to know if it'll be a good benefit or not for them. Uh, and we'll have to discuss with Tammy and yeah. or the um, or president's office who can actually even vote uh, on a resolution like this, since many of us on this committee are residents of Battery Park City, mm -hmm. and uh, we may have to accuse ourselves. Possibly, if it's going to help you, right? If, it, if there's a financial benefit to you? If there's a potential, you, you think your income's never going to drop? Yeah, that's a good point. We could get we will get a full good clarification too, which we know this could get worse. <laughs> In my house. All right, let's move on. What else? We've done that one. Now it's just Pat Patrick. Are you here? Or I don't know if he is here. Patrick, I think. Patrick is here. Yes, we can move him over as presenter. Um, and while we're moving him over, I want to read what Deva did want to say. Oh, oh, good. Okay, so this is going back to our first topic. Okay, because she wanted, she really made an effort to be here and she wanted to say something. Um, she said, okay, 
about the program in recreation on the Esplanade. Okay. Yeah. Given the low popularity and participation and the induced nuisance of dog urine, the money and space devoted to it was not worth it. Mm -hmm. Pedestrians clearly prefer to use the space for travel, walking, transportation, rather than for games play. The turf comprises pedestrian space, pushing some walkers and joggers to the bike lane, which compromises bicyclists' bicycle, bicycle space. It seems much better to return it to the well-loved and well-used wide Esplanade that it was. The money and time spent on it could be devoted to something else that would not infringe and make the space worse than it was before. Yeah. And that's what that says. Good. And so, yeah, I mean, you've got I mean, three the sentiment aside. That's really well written. It is. <laughs> it is right. The two minute <laughs> summary is, is that there's points there. It's, it's it, yeah. I don't know that we need it. Yeah. And if it's just for the tourists, uh, right. yeah. it was to you know light to light issue. Yeah, um, try. And I do like the tables and the chairs. You the know, table and chairs, hundred percent. You guys know Liz from Inatesso. <laughs> yes, she likes she, it. She's wonderful. She, aside from the turf, which I don't even know about what she thinks, the tables and chairs she likes yes. just because it gives people a chance. People they sit by her place, or they can yeah. just take and walk and, and sit walk. And people will stay and sit. And then some days, and yeah. weirdly. We get some beautiful days, even in, in December, yeah, yeah, yeah. January. But getting the getting the astro turf I mean, up soon now would be a good thing. It'll just open the space up again, and we can yeah. see. You know, we'll get a sense from people. I think even that, maybe you can keep the QRL code. Back with, with Dan and Gwen and the team, and we'll be back too. I want to make sure we kept the conversation going. At the bottom yes. of the presentations act, what you have is the links to uh, all the past <laughs> presentations we've done on this topic. So they're all in there for you if you want to go back and see the history. Um, okay. okay. All right, so do we need to pull yeah. up Nick's Nick's proposal, right? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> EPC <throat> committee report. Yes, yeah, so and then we're going. And so, and, and Pat's here. Do you want to let Pat go? Yeah, let's let's go first. Nick. Yes. Let's go. Uh, sorry, <laughs> yeah. Zach. Go to the bottom of the last page. Yeah, yeah, last page. Page. Yeah, yeah, last page. 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 <laughs> All right, Pat, you're up. I think you're a panelist. Yeah, yeah. it's your first night, so I kept it only to a ten and a half page report. <laughs> okay, oh. okay, good evening, everybody. Hey, Pat. Hey, How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Okay, hey. so uh, looking at the report, you can see on the bottom of Nick's uh, Nick's report the uh, spreadsheet. And you can see that uh, this past month, dealing with graffiti, we had four reports. They were basically dealing with uh, graffiti in Penny Park. Uh, we had graffiti in Teardrop Park, which basically was chalk on the uh, wall. And uh, we had graffiti on the uh, water fountain that's in Teardrop Park. All right. Uh, Basically, in Teardrop Park, just to give you, uh, you guys an update, uh, we're dealing with a group of kids that at about 8.30, 9 o'clock at night are all of a sudden showing up in Teardrop Park and, uh, as a large group, and they're loud. And, uh, the safety ambassador has been going up there in time now. To try to try and stop uh, what's going on. As soon as they see the SPO, they all split up. So basically, uh, they leave behind uh, alcoholic drinks. Uh, they haven't done any damage yet to anything, but it seems that they're coming from some sort of an event, and they end up in Teardrop Park, and then they split up when. Uh, the safety ambassadors and the supervisors end up coming up to them. So they, so they spread out throughout the park and then they rejoin and head back up towards Hudson River Park. Up north. Right. So that's still with the graffiti and what's going on there towards Teardrop Park. Uh, on the homeless, uh, this month we had nine interactions with the homeless people. That's pretty much on uh, North End. We're dealing with it, uh, North End Avenue and Chambers, and uh, Rockefeller Rockefeller Park and Penny Park. Like I've said on uh, past meetings, we end up getting uh, homeless in the early morning, 
trying to stretch out in the benches there in uh, Penny Park and uh, Rockefeller Park. And, uh, you know, we get them that they uh, pretty much either sit up or if they're going to go lay down, lay down on the grass. Uh, put a blanket out and go lay down on the grass. Uh, okay, so uh, lost the found property. Uh, last year we only had two during this month. Uh, this month we had five. So basically we're coming into cell phones and uh, you know, uh, book bags. The kids are back to school, so now they're leaving book bags behind. Oops. People are, are coming and they get and they're uh, retrieving basically their cell phone and book bags back in our office. Uh, we're also starting to get now some lost and found property from the historic battery park. Uh, people started showing up at our office with it. Um, just to let you know on that. Uh, park rules. Basically, is uh, we've been dealing with skateboarders up at Belvedere Park and uh, the Esplanade at Rector and skateboarders. Uh, the rest of it dealing with park rules. We uh, we were dealing with vehicles being parked for uh, Albany. I don't know our friend over in Albany calls us all the time, even for garbage trucks and post office trucks over there. <laughs> right, uh, and that brings us to our uh, next topic, that our solicitors, that's zero, zero last year, it's zero this year, uh, dealing with dogs, uh, the dog reports last year was four, and uh, this year it was four, and uh, that it's really uh, Rector Park. We're dealing with dogs there and uh, and also Rockefeller Park. Basically, the dogs are on the leash, but they're on the lawn. That's what it's coming down to. Uh, we're not getting uh, many reports. I say, so I say one report where a dog is off the leash. Uh, the other thing is during the past storm, just to uh, let you know, we dealt with uh, two trees down. Uh, one of the trees came down on uh, a vehicle over from Rector Park. Wow. So we had to block off the street there. And Parks had uh, their people come and remove the tree. And, uh, we recorded the damage there. Also, the tree Thank you, down in the wild in the back. So, uh, Parks also dealt with that. In the wild. In the wild. <laughs> That's the, wild. the section yeah. in the back that they call the wild. <laughs> where is that? Yeah, where's the wild in the back? back it's the behind the, uh, you know where the Jewish Heritage Museum is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bit? There's a little fenced off area there. Oh, okay. Uh, and the tree just fell of its own accord? The wind right. It just, oh. it just came down because of the wind and obviously the large amount of rain. So that's yeah. really what affected the trees because we've had so much rain of late and that that's was the wind. Sad. The wind came along and uh, the trees came down. Not, that was not yeah. a tree that was slated to come down and came down. Mm. Too bad. <laughs> too so, bad. Awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, I do too, but go ahead. Um, Patrick, um, I, I have a question about the protocol for the ambassadors when they see a uh, a violation such as you know e-bikes on the esplanade or what, whatever the violation may be and i want to be clear i'm not asking them to do more enforcement or less enforcement but i want to understand what what the expectation is are, are they expected to confront a rule violator or are they expected to report it to a supervisor or what what is the protocol well, the way I, I explain it to uh, the safety ambassadors is uh, to first try and take a picture, okay, before they approach someone and then, uh, you know, approach them and explain to them whatever the rule violation is and, 
you know, and for them to to uh, see. So basically, if they're confronting a homeless person, I ask them to take a picture ahead of time and then go over to the homeless person and have a conversation, whether he's sleeping on the on the bench or whatever, explain to him that he has to sit up uh, or he can turn around and lay a blanket down on the lawn and uh, lay down on the lawn. Uh, most of the time, really, uh, what we've been dealing with on the S board really now is really with the kids. Uh, we did have this no, uh, this new thing. I don't know if you ever heard of it, parkour. Yes. That is, yes. That's not new. Okay. Well, the word to me is new. <laughs> okay. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know what that is. It's uh, when they jump from one thing to another. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, of course. So all of a sudden in Rector Park, because you have that high wall, you know, yeah. just uh, before you go down to uh, West Thames Park there, mm -hmm. uh, we had that. So we ended up talking to the kids that were doing that. And it was like, where's the sign? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, where's the sign? No jumping. Right. <laughs> Off the wall. Right. No, it's well, they were jumping from one thing to the other, and you know you have all of the little kids playing on that mm. astroturf that's over there. Yeah. So it was out of you know, hey, listen, there is no sign, but look, you're gonna if you fall, you're gonna, you jump, you're gonna hurt a little kid that's over yeah. here yeah. kicking kicking a small ball. So yeah. uh, it was, you want to go jump? Okay, go jump further <laughs> down. Well, you're not going to hurt a kid. You may hurt yeah. yourself, but I mean, you know. Yeah, we so, can't that. Yeah. Um, you know, so that, that's what I try to tell them. And, and of course, just because of my uh, small time dealing with uh, people in the malls on security and uh if you we're dealing with uh, young teenagers i tell them don't take a picture where you can identify their face so they're just going to take a picture where it's going to capture their chest and on down okay uh, but basically it, it's just to educate i try to tell them it's to educate the public as to what the rules are in the park mm -hmm. they observe someone breaking the rule does that help any uh clarify any it, it does but how about a situation like speeding e-bikes on the esplanade um uh i mean that's i assume against the rule i don't know if it is or it speed, isn't the but speeding speed, is speed. Uh, yeah. but uh uh it is a problem lots of people e complain to me about it um yeah and uh, uh i understand that these guys are not law enforcement officers, and maybe they don't want to stand out in front of an e-bike coming coming at 30 miles an hour. But what what is the protocol when they observe something like that? Well, uh, to be to be honest with you, uh, the protocol that we have and the park rules that we have is where the bikes belong. In other words, you know what's on the upper esplanade and what's on the lower esplanade. Speed is not there, and and, and believe me, uh, before the, uh, they came out with these e-bikes and uh, the people with these scooters with no license plate on them or anything driving all over the damn place, uh, uh, that's where we're going with uh, with the scooters. Uh, we've been uh, reaching out to the first precinct and working with them. Uh, concerning them because they are considered to be a motor vehicle and are supposed to have a license plate and you're supposed to have a driver's license and everything to operate it. Uh, you can even see if you walk along uh, you know, uh, the street, you can even see in the neighborhood of Battery Park City certain scooters that's parked at the curb and there's no license plate on no those scooters. Mm -hmm. There's a license plate on them, so any, you know, the police department can come along and scoop them up if they want. And uh, he's talking about, you know, 
On, yeah. on the yeah. e-bikes, unfortunately, there's I, I had law enforcement before they made this all legal. Uh, they used to go by the Greenway and yeah. write tickets. And anybody that didn't have proper ID or whatever, they would seize them. So the last time was before COVID, and they seized about 100 bikes back then. But uh, when the mayor's office turned around and made them that they're uh, legal to operate, that stopped law enforcement being able to do anything with them. That's, that's, All right, well, it sounds like something we need to take up with our quality of life committee. Yeah, exactly. yeah. It, is, it is really disturbing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just FYI, yeah. bicycles are considered vehicles in the city of New York. They um, are. That's, right? that's, they are. It's New York rules and regulations for oh, dash 02, I think it is. All bicycles? Well, All bicycles, yeah. they have to abide by the yeah. same rules. The same rules. Oh, as yes, they have to they have stop vehicles. at stop signs, stop at red lights. Not yeah. licenses, but they also, if they're involved in an accident, they're like a vehicle, they're supposed to stop. Yeah, they no the hit and runs, runs. yeah. That's, yeah. In, that's in the BTL, it's in the rules and regulations. Yeah. It's not makes sense. Even on the back part of the Esplanade, <gasps> yeah. they are allowed to ride back there. Yep. But they still have to abide by the same rules. Safely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Patrick, um, quickly, uh, with the publicity regarding the um, recent two assaults, have there been more officers assigned to patrol? Uh, when you say assaults, which assaults are you talking about? <laughs> One on the no, I just, I just want to be, just want to be clear because the reports that I heard come in, and even with speaking with the first precinct. They've gotten calls about an assault over by the Esplanade and Rector. Right. Three, uh, police cars yes. show up and there's nobody there. There's nobody being assaulted. There's no complaining. Uh, there's oh, no victim. Yeah. All right. Um, How did we know about thank it? Thank you. And um, even with that, um, people in the neighborhood are, are a little bit freaked out by that. Um, I'm wondering if you are going to have more safety ambassadors walking around, or do you just have a limited number and you just have to do what you do? Well, basically, uh, I'm working off a budget that's uh, been set up with the authority. So uh, we ramp up in the summertime, and now we're in the process of actually ramping down for the winter time. But I can tell you this, with Wagner Park closed and now PRA, we've just, um, the last, what is it, two days ago, PRA has now been completely blocked off. So now I have those two safety ambassadors moved up forward and covering more coverage towards Rector Park and the Esplanade. Yeah, it's, okay. not, it's not any it's not any less presence than it usually is this time of year. But now we're hoping for more. But now with less space to cover, I think what Pat is suggesting is kind of a little more. Uh, yes, that's what well, we could be yeah. more. It, yeah, it should, could be. It's all right. It's it the same, same amount to cover less space, which I think would be more of a presence. Have yeah. you um have you received any comments about people not feeling as safe as they used to? With the recent publicity? Um I wouldn't, you know what? I have gotten emails about it. I wouldn't say that I haven't always gotten emails about it. Okay. So since I started at Battery Park <laughs> City, I've been hearing that <laughs> it's not the same as it used to be in the 80s and 90s. Well. Um, which again, and I, I'm not trying to no, discount no, no. people's concerns, um, because if I lived here and I had a concern, I'd want to make sure that people who were responsible were taking it seriously and listening, which we do. Um, I know people in Matt Fenton my building are article this morning about yeah this uh bank robbery chase it's unclear how much money the people may offer if they did but contextually it was helpful to see that while it's never a good thing to see that that happened um the, the amount of bank robberies for the police and large is actually down from what it was yeah. last year yeah. so yeah. But it always helps to contextualize it's perhaps cold comfort if it happens <laughs> to you personally if you Correct. experience yeah. it i have no doubt that Valley park city remains Probably the same statement that in New York City, not. I, I just have yeah. residents in in my complex coming up to me and saying, "Hey, 
Yeah, what I, I certainly that. would say is in my report, so this would make it perhaps a little bit shorter. Um, we have a very good relationship, and we are thankful for that with the first precinct. They've always been great partners. You guys know our neighborhood mm -hmm. coordination officers, yep. and Nick Aragano, who was in the uh, Community Affairs Office. They every month do the first precinct community council, which some members of the city yeah. community board sit yeah. on. Tomorrow. The one that's very good. It was yeah, supposed it to be it's last PM. Thursday of the month. It got shifted till tomorrow, and it's by Zoom. They yes. do it in person. So tomorrow night, okay. six o'clock, by Zoom. The link is in my report. Um, oh, yeah. Anybody who has yeah. concerns about uh, you know public safety issues generally, generally in Battery yeah, Park exactly. City or across the first precinct, should go. And we're always talking to the first mm -hmm. precinct. So when things come up, we are coordinating with them. Their response to Battery Park City and when issues come up is, you know, immediate. They're great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We work hand in glove with them. Uh, we want to make sure that obviously <coughs> law enforcement, we are part of the quality of the ambassadors. Um, but we are not, uh, I, I, would, I wouldn't say that we are wanting for resources. I think that makes sense. And to be clear, the bank is off. Is not covered or patrolled by the Correct. That's ally. Private, we don't patrol private property or indoors. That would be that would be the bank, and obviously the police. The police, yeah, yeah, of course. And, and one thing to realize also, because of the scam that's going on, and which Nick uh, has published, and the first precinct has published, you know, don't hand your cell, uh, cell phone over to anybody that is soliciting money for whatever sports or whatever the activity is. Yes. Uh, we do we we do and have had, you know, uh, a sergeant uh, popped up up by Six River and was hanging out over there with his driver. Uh, at times, police officers have been popping up in the park because of it uh, and because of the number of complaints dealing with that uh, scam. So uh, the police presence is definitely around. Obviously, with the uh, protests that have been occurring by Wall Street and that stuff, and uh, the marching, a lot of these resources were pulled. Yeah, uh, from that's, probably the protests. that's probably what happened last Thursday. I'm guessing. So, you know. Palestinian um, rights. Okay. Right. Support Israel. Mm -hmm. But yes, do not give your do not give your folks if they are saying Ben will meet. Just Ben will meet. Yeah. Just say thank you. No, thank you. Any other reason? Yeah. Or for any other reason. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> for any other reason. That's right. I don't know you. All right. Thank you so much, Patrick. As always, oh, appreciate okay. it. Um, You're welcome. Thanks, and Patrick. I would remind everybody who's here sign in. So the first thing I would say, obviously, top of mind, in addition to preserving and expanding uh, housing affordability where we can, kind of one and one A for these already is our resiliency work. Um, so the first thing I would note is thank you to everyone who participated in our site walks over the course of October 19th, 21st, and 26th. There's a picture of that on the next page, but the top item right there at the bottom of the page, sorry, uh, Zach, if you could go right back up, is upcoming touch points for the Northwest Battery Park City Resiliency Project. We are going to be at the Environmental Protection Committee of Manhattan Community Board 1 on Monday, November 20th. We're going to be making an update there in the Northwest Battery Park City Resiliency Project as part of the Lower Manhattan Coastal Resiliency Quarterly Update. And what we said we would do for the committee then is to bring folks up to speed on some of the uh, developments on reaches one, two, and five specifically. So the idea is we're not going to be able to go as deep on one, two, and five as we will later in the month, which is listed there. But uh, certainly for the committee, we want to bring folks up to the place where if you went on a sidewalk and you saw some of how one, two, and five have been kind of de been developing conceptually based on feedback we've received, we want to make sure that we're able to bring the EPC committee up to that point as well and then answer questions uh, that people have about the project as always and then this is just noticed um and i i sent it to tammy last week and alice but november 30th which is thursday after thanksgiving so it's the last thursday of the month 30 days notice because we want to make sure we always give as much notice as we can 
top of the next page there, Zach, is our next community meeting on the uh, Northwest project. So what we did in June is we did a kind of 30% design meeting. This was in person and online at Stuyvesant High School. We are now doing what we are phrasing, and you'll forgive the term, we may end up working in the title, but basically a post 30% design update. So based on everything we've heard at June and since June and through the sidewalks, here's where we are now with the project as we uh, come toward uh, come to the end of the year. So that's gonna be Thursday, November 30th, at Stuyvesant High School, oh, it's nice. in it's person, and How are you advertising those updates? Every means possible. So if you have any ideas, in addition, we'd like to hear it. We put it in the local papers, the broadsheet, Tribeca Citizen, Tribeca Trip, <laughs> post and attach. We do emails to each of the buildings. We do postcard mailings to every address in Battery Park City and in 10013, physical postcard. Uh, we do social media, we do newsletter, we do email blasts, and we send it to the community board as well for them to include. Okay. I've never so, gotten a postcard, but I think flyers in the buildings would be helpful. Flyers in the lobbies as well. We, have, we actually have people walk around to the to the buildings as well and drop flyers. Okay. If you want to send those to me too, I'm happy to put them in all the Wonderful. buildings. Well, that would be so, good. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure I got it in front of the committee tonight. The event right will be live hopefully the next day or so, so you can actually click on and say 1010. Mm -hmm. But for sure, we want to make sure that people come. And put this up on your on the kiosks too. On yes, the park. Oh, sorry, that's awesome. Oh, so yes. it's also yeah, in the did. parks. You saw them up there. They'll be coming down now because the sidewalks yeah, right, are open. Yeah, but the sidewalks are open. We'll swap them. out the sidewalks yeah. and put these in the physical kiosks as we walk through the parks. The liars in the lighted buildings. Okay. They have a table, an yep. information right. table as you go in. So flyers there. So, so the best Thursday of the year, obviously, is Thanksgiving. But the second best Thursday of the year is going to be the following, the following <laughs> Thursday, November 30th. Northwest Battery Park City. Okay. Zach, what we got next? South Battery, okay, that's the picture of the sidewalks we'll see there. So thank you. We had over 90 people attend the sidewalks over the course of the four sessions. South Battery Park City Resiliency Project, as you know, construction is underway. I just put there, it's on our website as well, traffic advisory. It's not a closing of the streets, but it's a narrowing of the lanes overnight on Battery Place, um, which will allow for some of the work um, that is happening, but we can go on there and the contact there is Rick Fogarty, is our construction community, community construction liaison. Okay, next item is uh, um, top of page four. Nick, before we yes, get there, I'm just going to make a comment because I was getting a bunch of emails about it. Um, just go people ahead. complaining about the access to the Battery Park because they don't like having to go down to I State know Street. I know it. And people are complaining. And so if there's any way, I don't know if there is, any way, shape, or form to allow access from the Battery Park City side, so it. people I, can I've come in and out concern. safely. But I've heard the concern. I know it. I know it's it's an inconvenience, but that is that's, it's not possible to do it other than at State Street, which is different from what people are used to. Yeah. I walk the side. It's actually not as far as it, it would seem, and I think, but it when you're used to coming you're, straight down, it depends, it depends where you're coming so, from. But yeah, if you're used to coming straight it's, down, it is a change. But it is. Um, it is. Is it ADA accessible? Yes, hundred percent. Yes. And easy to get through. Did Rick respond, but I'm sure he, he did. He did, did answer that. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure uh, that's I mean, he would let us know if it's anything it shouldn't be. But as far as I know, no, it should be. In, it, it's required to be, but if, if something is not where it needs to be, let us know and we'll fix it. And right. you may be getting to this, but I have. I noticed Go just ahead. yesterday walking the dogs on the on the north east corner of Rector Place. Yes. They redid the sidewalk, and it's like a, it's new cement, and they have a red square or a rectangle there. The the brrr, to curve go down. Cut. Curve oh, right. cut. Cut. It's they in. did this. The, I just noticed it today. No, no I think on the floor. DOT, the, it's a DOT oh, thing, maybe. DOT, the, the, they put just, up. They put up a new uh, street light. Oh, they did. Okay, DOT. Yeah, yeah it's okay. not lit up yet, but they were jackhammering yeah. all over the place. Is that what that was? Yeah. Place yeah. And uh, right at South End Avenue. South End Avenue. Okay. And, yeah. Oh, oh it's in the street bed? Uh, yeah, no, yeah, the, the curb cut. The, the curb cut. Oh, it's it's in it the it corner rather than having like one on each side. It's yeah. right at the corner. Oh, it's big and wide. You big like and it? wide? No. Smooth. But I don't want <laughs> snow and ice. If you don't like it, then it's definitely out. DOT. Yeah, yeah. DOT. Yeah. 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 I don't know if I like it. Question for Betty. When they have those bumps in them, is that actually low That's vision. what it's for. I was going to say, don't think that I like that. But it's yeah, not no. helpful on wheels, no. 
low vision so they could see it. And so they right feel, feel it. No, they, they feel, feel it. it. They oh, feet. the pain in the yeah. feet. Okay. Well, just like the bumpy thing in the subways. The yellow strip is bumpy, usually. Okay, I get it. Okay, All right, four more minutes. What do we got? That's it. That's oh, it. Okay. Time runs. All right, this is one of my favorite events. Compost. Smash the pumpkins. Orange, you glad we're back. Okay. Mm -hmm. Operation okay. Pumpkin Drop is back. We composted about 750 pounds of pumpkin last year for the inaugural operation. We are back. There's locations across Battery Park City. So <laughs> drop your pumpkins through the end of the week. We will compost them and it goes back into Battery Park City's garden. So a lot of fun. Thank you, oh, Operation Pumpkin yeah. Drop Part 2. Next thing is uh, one of Marion's favorite items, but uh, free Asphalt Green membership for seniors. If you live in Battery Park City and you're over 65, the flyer is there, the link is there. Um, we thank our partners at Asphalt Green for being great partners, and uh, we'll continue to look with excitement and admire that program. So that's there as well. Uh, Zach, you can go ahead and zip, zip across to the next page. I don't want to go through all the upcoming programs or all listed there for your benefit. However, the one thing good. That's it. Asphalt Green. Yes. There is a single residential building in Battery Park City that is not in 10280 or 10282. The Reds, I believe. Which residences? Right. You call up from the Reds and say, hi, I live blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, you're not allowed here. I don't even know why. What is their zip code? They wanted to have the cachet of a different zip code. What is their zip code? I have 10004. It's yeah, like one single building. It is just one. It's a good point. On, I remember doing this when we that. did the census outreach. I'll call us. But right now, they're telling people who live in that building. But oh, are they? Is yeah, you're not sure. I'll make sure that they know. Thank you for bringing it up. And you know, in a month, they're rolling it out to all of the community boards. Right. So they just They should just know generally. Even aside from this program, that for whatever odd reason, that one building doesn't have it. So it's a good. It's a good plug. I just learned that they didn't have it. So <laughs> don't blame them for not knowing, but I did know it was part of Battery Park City. So go ahead. Thank you, Matthew. I don't want to go through all of them, but the e waste drive we're really excited about yeah. that is on um, Espinal, that's yeah. Saturday, yeah. The 4th. Yep. So if you have it's electronics to recycle, um, we work closely with this, our sustainability team, and Allison Cinco. But no batteries. I don't let me owe you an answer on batteries, right? I think I'll confirm about whether you can do batteries okay. or not. Um, but that's exciting. That's part of our whole programming, and we want to make sure folks are aware, are aware of the first e-waste drive. Hopefully, we have more to come. That's okay, sweet. zipping through. Um, the last thing uh, you can go to the next page, Zach. Please, page six. Yeah. Holiday lights. I know it was one of the big community events. Yeah. That's <sighs> Thursday, December seventh. I know we're maybe kicking around the idea of doing the PC committee on that that night as well. So just oh. as a flag. No, yeah, we don't want to do that. I, I don't want to move it. If we, might, I, it might I, be a little tricky. Generally speaking, Thursdays work with this particular time. Well, no, I want to be. Yeah, right. no. We love and that's PTC right. committee. We should have it after Thursday. We can't have it. Yeah, but no, we can't because we've got stuff to do. That's the first night of Hanukkah too. Yeah. Okay. First night of Hanukkah also. Interesting. Usually, but they're. I have to answer and say no. I really rather not. Next change it. But I, I don't know for sure. All right. So modern big six scam alert. We covered. We can go right past that. And then the next thing I would flag for you is just at the bottom there of uh, Zach page uh, seven, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, we always put the reminder out about no dogs on lawns, obviously, which Pat covered. This is also the time of year, as we know, that we begin closing lawns down for the season to allow them time to heal. But as we found in years past, we've had some success in not having to close all the lawns. So for this year, Partial lawn closures will happen, but some of them will remain open. So the ones that are closed are listed there. Rector East, Rocky Park South, First View Triangle, the West Thames Playground Lawn, not the turf, the lawn at the end. At the right? little edge, the yeah. little edge where the playground is, mm -hmm. and the teardrop lawns. The teardrop lawns, of course, will open up during snow because people like going down on the sleds. Mm -hmm. So starting the week of November 20th, that's the Monday before Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. The volleyball court. We're going to keep up until November 16th. Nice, thank you. Because we wanted to make sure that the volleyballers had that extra long weekend of Veterans Day to enjoy. But mm -hmm. then the mat has to start coming, coming up, up the yeah. as well. And I communicated with you. The, told them that's perfect. The thank you. Okay. Um, all right. So zipping down to the next, I just have some highlights here of what we did. We can go through that. Not that I want to give it a short trip, but we had a very successful blood drive. We had the meet the zookeeper event, meet the beekeeper event, rescheduled for climate week. Uh, and at the top of page, uh, nine there we had our domestic violence awareness day when we wore purple 
And we have Campfire Stories and Songs, which is always a very successful event. That was this past Saturday at uh, Teardrop Park. So, um, top of page 10 there, Zach, the first precinct community council meeting, which we noted. I put the Zoom link in there as well as the direct dial, the meeting ID, and the pass code. Tomorrow, yeah. yeah. Um, and then the last item for you all is actually two items. One just in. One, we're getting to the part of the year now where in addition to our programming events scaling down because it's getting colder, a lot of our outdoor permanent events are also scaling down. So we have one event there at the top of page 11, Zach, just a, a run in the dark, walkathon oh. run for charity. Um, that's, in, that's in the 15th, but it's only yeah. 60 to 80 folks and it okay. uh, should be pretty quick. The last item I'll flag for the group, this is actually since I was able to publish this, but there's going to be some construction work going on um, right by the side of NYMEX and the Irish Memorial Lawn. There is some sidewalk there that needs to be replaced, kind of needs to do some work. Okay. So it's fairly perfunctory, but they'll have a truck pulled up on the sidewalk there by North End Avenue, and they'll probably do some work replacing some electrical walls uh, probably early next week. So no cause for alarm, but just so you're aware. Okay. And that's mostly it. That's mostly um, it. That's it. Thank that you. Bad, right? yeah, it's very nice. Um, I, I have one clock. real quick. Um, does anybody know anything about the mailbox that got taken away near Gateway? No. no. Oh, the one right by the garage? Yeah. I love the mailbox. It's gone. It's well, gone. there is one. I had a debate with my wife whether it was there before, but there <laughs> is one on Albany and South. Yeah. Yes, yes, there is. But, you know, um, I've had a lot of the. Um, Elderly tenants complain. I, I, I think I've seen some blips somewhere that um, a number of mailboxes in the neighborhood generally have been removed. If, Betty, do you know about that? Well, I was in my building, I thought that was everywhere. The mail, when they deliver, it's all the mail that's delivered. Mm -hmm. so the mailbox. Oh, you can just leave it at the building. Yeah, you can. Oh, okay. For for indigo mailboxes, there are slots for outgoing. Oh, it's too big. We leave it on the counter. But if you've missed, but if you've missed that day's outgoing, right. you may want to go out in the street. Right. But otherwise, I leave mail. They're so they're no, so. Sorry, I'll check and see what I can find. Right. And I'm they're sorry. used to oh, mailing. Thank mail. you. Otherwise, thank you, everybody. I'll call this meeting to a close. Thank you for. Coming to India and Dada. I apologize for the technical difficulties. Thank you for your input, though. All right, everybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>